Love this the fucking fade chair, in, man. Yeah, yeah. No, exactly. Start all over with the chair. <laughs> and you see Johnny's you know, just like, oh no, it's gonna start this way. What's up, everybody? This is Carrick with ACG, and I'm here with Silver and Johnny and Abzi. And we're doing the best gaming podcast number 443. Might have called last one 443. Might have happened. Yeah, you did. No, 442, remember? Because I was like, oh, is it 420? 442 like, is oh, good. No, it's 442. Then we're good. Then, then right. everything has, has always worked out perfectly on this podcast. Yes. But thank you, everybody, for showing up. Thanks for watching the news videos. If you get a chance and you don't see those videos, sub, uh, unsubscribe and resubscribe to the channel, and you'll see those if you want to see news videos. Um, I call them news videos, but they're technically not. In fact, the technical term or the technical name for them is not just the news because I want to talk about some interesting bits. And that is actually what we're going to talk about today. We have a couple different things that we want to talk about sort of dive back into. Max says, just informing that there was a Discord QA for Suicide Squad this morning. Not too much news other than a tease for Endgame. Oh, we're gonna be we're gonna be talking about we're gonna be talking about Suicide Squad for sure. But first, we're gonna talk My about what we have been split. playing. No, your camera looks good. Why? Oh, uh, oh, on the stream, it's like it's like half, it's like split. Well, he did freeze. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, I wasn't sure yeah. if it was just me. I was like, <laughs> uh, he's, <laughs> I love it. He looks like Action Man. He's, he was like, duh, 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 I've got, I got a place to go, people. Yo, but Zoom anyway. uh, crashed. Oh, wow. Okay, well, but you're I'm up back. and running now. Yeah. So, yeah. Silver, what have you been playing? Um, almost entirely Sea of Thieves. Damn, really? Uh, I've been getting pretty deep into it, actually. Um, uh, started playing the Monkey Island content. Which mm -hmm. really nice. The, the nostalgia vibes, uh, like honestly, they they really nailed nailed that as a love letter to the franchise. Um, like when you arrive at Melee Island and the monkey Michael Lance Monkey Island theme kicks in, mm -hmm. um, just an amazing moment. And you see Melee Island in three D. Like you walk into the scum bar, and there's the guy hanging in the anchor uh, chandelier. There, so it's the all there, basically. Lords. Yeah. The guy talking about Loom. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, the the chef in the kitchen. Um, like and the, and the puzzle element of, of it is the classic um, A to B to C to D. You have to get this to get this to get this to get this to get this. Uh, mm -hmm. in, like this chain sequence of puzzles. Uh, old school, like old school point and click adventure games, um, which is a nice callback. Um, it just works really, really well within Sea of Thieves. Uh, um, it's a natural fit, uh, and and they rare really really did a great job with it. Um, I haven't finished uh, all the Monkey Island Tall Tales yet, uh, but I am about halfway through them. Um, I've also um, been diving into a lot of the new content that's been added since, like uh, mermaids have been added, which are really creepy. Like you're underwater and you can hear them singing. Um, like I was diving to a shipwreck and I got continuously con continuously attacked by mermaids as I was hauling out treasure. I had to kill like 20 of them. Uh, it's really creepy, really fun to fight them. Um, there's uh, There are new fortresses to fight, ghost fleets. Um, just there's so much content in the game now. Uh, so much stuff to do, uh, so much variety there. Um, like cooking on the ships is really fun as well. Um, the, the fishing, uh, all of it is just, um, it, it's, it's become the, it's fulfilled sort of the promise that it had, I think, at, at the outset to the point where, to me, it's now probably my favorite pirate game uh, that I've played. Uh, it's just it's just a lot of fun to get into because you can do pretty much, you can do every anything from just hauling freight from port to port to um, to ship, ship to ship battles to boarding ships, fighting player to player. Uh, uh, raiding skeleton forts or whatever it is like there's there's so much scope for the playground and what you can do you can also just um if you want with if you're playing with friends you can just camp out on the beach have a barbecue play music dance whatever um there there's there's a lot of potential there um that i got a question i got a question for you though the game must have sucked day one if you said it's now the best pirate game because there's certainly not a lot of pirate games like if you've got a That's if you've true. got a subset of five and you're saying it's now the best one, what one was it losing to? It's really one of a kind, right? I there's yeah, no game but, like Sea of Thieves. No, what are I we mean, thinking? No, like I mean, Pirates of the Caribbean uh, <laughs> online was a pirate I, game. 
no, no the um, the Pirates of the Caribbean game that was originally Sea C- Dogs Two. Yeah, Sea Dogs Two. Um, hmm. uh, Sid Meier's Pirates, obviously. Uh, Black Flag. As True well, Pirates. I um, forgot about the one name, one game yeah, named like, Pirates. Thieves as well. Like the way it works, like what it is, is it is one of a kind. I think. I don't think there's a game like it. No, it's there, definitely there isn't a game like it. No, different. Uh, um, and I mean, and I mean, the sailing is still as as fun and satisfying yeah, as ever. Sailing, I mean, so I had good the that water, game. the water looks so had, good in that game. I had I, such a fun moment because I had to go to like an island. I had to, to, to track down like a shipwreck, and I had to like gather clues. So I camped out in an island. My ship was um, laden with treasure, but a storm blew in over the island, and the storm basically sank my ship as I was on the island. But I had a rowboat hooked up to the back of the boat, of, of my ship and the rowboat survived. survived so i took all all the all the treasure that was floating in the water i hauled it all onto the rowboat and then i just rowed across the ocean <laughs> with like my compass and my spyglass as the only sort of and then using landmarks as the only way to navigate toward where i roughly remembered the nearest outpost being and i actually made it to the outpost and i was able to haul all the loot from my rowboat onto uh to sell it uh, at the outpost um, without my ship, which was a fun experience, just uh, rowing across the entire ocean. <laughs> it's got that organic feel. Um, it, he also, people, if you're in the Discord, he'll be. Uh, we're going to talk about him getting a, a clan set up for or whatever it's called, and that would be called a fleet, I guess. Uh, guild. Guild. Okay, it's, so he'll be yeah, setting that up or or trying to. We're going to get that set up. We've been doing a bunch of stuff in the Discord with that kind of thing, like division. We've been jumping into and um, all those kind of games. So. That's uh, that's one positive of being a member, and I do want to say thank you to William, who just became one. Become a member. I appreciate it. People are asking Thanks, different William. questions. Let's see. Yeah, thank you, William. William. Well, shout out William, William multiple times. William, William, William. Bill. Thank you. Billy. Ooh. Ooh. There's also um, an element of it I enjoy as like a stealth gamer, because I mostly play a uh, solo sloop, where I'm just sailing by myself on a sloop, um, and I avoid other players. Like constantly paying attention to my environment and sort of dodging, maybe hiding behind an island if somebody's at an outpost, watching them through the through the looking glass, and then um, waiting until Trying they sail in. off, and then and then sneaking in to sell my stuff. Um, so there's this stealth element to it as well, to the way I play that I really sort of enjoy as a stealth mm-hmm. gamer, or sneaking through and dodging, like constantly keeping an eye on the map for like PvP players because. They often care, uh, fly a PvP flag so that you can actually see them on the map. So constantly being aware of where they are in relation to you, if they're actually trying to co- come for you, and maybe trying to land, navigate into a storm to maybe lose them there or whatever. Um, just constantly adapting to the new situations is a huge Some uh, of the part best. of what makes the game so attractive. Some of the most fun streams was watching Summit... Um was watching summit do like stealth stealth stuff in this in that game he'd like go solo and like fuck with players like stealthily go on their boat and uh and like steal their shit or or just kill them slowly and it was really really cool to watch yeah there's, there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do in it um what about you johnny what have you been playing i've been replaying near automata and i i also jumped into minecraft and i was uh <laughs> believe it or I not saw like that. the first time actually learning all the mechanics you know like all, all the minecraft st- like how to do stuff in the game making waterfalls like at waterfall making waterfalls uh killed the dragon for the first time got oh, the oh shit you actually beat got... minecraft well yeah well i think there's some other stuff uh yeah of course no but yeah I, but that's like the but, speed run stuff yeah yeah but you know that that's been fun as well and i've been playing the 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 gaiden yakuza game too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Which You've which one have out? you been streaming, Johnny? Near near Automata. So how many how much more of near do you have for your stream then? Do you think how many or are you done? Um, no, I still need a few more streams because I'm doing several of the routes. So I'm currently in the second route of the game, which is like when you get the nine S perspective, and then there's another one, another character, and I think there's like. A couple yeah, there's of, three main ones, and then like three uh, main ones. like one more thing where you have to repeat like the last mission. Yeah, so yeah. so I want to get like the three main ones at least. Yeah, I do yeah. want to also beat sh- the game fully. It's like it's really cool because you don't like for the other than B after B, 
you don't feel like you're replaying anything like it just continues on you know what i mean Which yeah there's you... some overlap but it, they do a good job of feeling like you know you're getting a new layer on yeah i want to shout out uh, johnny's shirt too Straight up. Yeah, it's pretty out there, isn't that it? That shirt I was, is you know, awesome. I was looking no, 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 at it no, like, it's should awesome. I pull the trigger? It's, on? it's, Let's do it's it. awesome. I Let's love go. it. I love it. Um, And then <laughs> Minecraft with Minecraft. Have, I know you showed me the shaders you were running. Are you doing mods in that uh, above and beyond shaders? Or are you Not keeping right it now. vanilla no, Minecraft? It was just pure vanilla, man. Yeah, pure vanilla. Oh, hey, it's a classic flavor for a reason, right? Like, that's the way it goes. Did yeah, you try yeah. different, um, like, seeds for the for the... For your world first did you like restart a couple no. times or is this uh, um, iron man no, where you're like it was i get a what friend i get who set up the world mm -hmm. so i just went into it without any knowledge of that but i, oh. I have to admit like i find the, the the most enjoyable part is just setting up you know a, a base or a few bases connecting stuff and like creating my own systems for farming and stuff like that more than like going out and fighting and raiding. I, I don't particularly enjoy like the combat in the game. Right. You know? Dude, the first time I played Minecraft, I remember it was becoming <laughs> night and I got the warning that night was coming. And I, I don't know if I heard that it was dangerous or whatever. And I built the shittiest hovel ever. It was just one human length width. And then I had like a piece of dirt and a piece of dirt and I could see through it. And that was it. And I just waded all the way through through night into day. And it was one of the better memories I've ever had in gaming, where I was like, oh, what's going to... You could hear the shit, too, around you, like, rah, 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 whatever, their, rah, whatever their sounds are. And I remember yeah. just sitting there going, like, dude, I am... Yeah, and I was like, I am into this game. It, it It is crazy how, like, much that game sort of works without visuals. It doesn't need... It, it's great when you can do the shaders, but for some reason, that game... Just nails it, even at the you know the fucking really rough looking Java version, you know where you just like run, yeah, yeah. ran like shit back in the day. I remember you could bring a PC to its knees by like turning out draw distance too far, and you'd be like, uh oh. You Dude, know? Yeah. How many how many insane mods that game has too? Like thousands, uh, my friend and I thousands. played an I Alien Isolation remake in that game. <laughs> That's nuts. Alien isolation uh, together, yeah. And people it's making crazy. calculators oh, and computers and oh, dude, you dude, know, dude, some dude, no, not even, dude, some dude made uh 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 like ran Doom, Doom, the game within a uh device that they made within the game with no mods. They used uh the red shit to make like a whole circuit board, a CPU, and literally parts of a of a working system to play Doom in it. And I can't really fathom what the hell they had to do to make a circuit with like the red shit, but the the, the, the just the idea of being able to do that is insane. Apparently, I talked yeah, about it last yeah. night. I hate talent, man. Yeah, do you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I see people yeah, do that kind of stuff yeah. or do something like miniatures or whatever, and I'll try to make it. And it just it's oh, dude, always I experienced the same thing because I, I was. Yeah. Oh. Go ahead, Sorry, Sorry, what so about uh, for, Forza, like. Uh cosmetics like doing oh the, the, the liveries the liveries yeah, yeah oh my god <laughs> and, homer like, simpson like or whatever using, you like it's perfect using, using like an eternity to like recreate like a raising livery or and then you see like <laughs> what somebody else has done it's like, yeah my, mine looks like an how, eight the, year old how they've basically <laughs> just taken like 800 layers like on top of each other like little, little piece by piece <laughs> i was it's very just, happy i got acg <laughs> on mine <laughs> like, yeah. and yeah, it didn't yeah. look terrible i was like hey man what about you absi <laughs> What are you playing? Uh, you know, I'm waiting for Yakuza. I'm playing random shit. Uh, mm. Still going through Dishonored 2 here and there. Uh, Binding of Isaac all the time. Uh, and when I play with a friend, we've been playing random shit like Returnal, PUBG, Fortnite. Uh, we played Remnant 2. Uh, and uh, yeah, just, you know, going around, doing a lot of stuff. Played some Dark Tide here and there. You know, just, just passing time until Yakuza comes. It's a good, this last couple of weeks have been good for that. Not that there hasn't been yeah. games out, but it's been a good time. That's what I did. Uh, game Dev and I decided to just start back in Division all over again and, and start playing from the start. And it just bothers me a little bit, man. That, that game's, you know, five, six years, Division one and two, eight years, whatever. They still look amazing. Like yeah. a lot of games yeah. that you get new, you're all, I mean, I love Remnant, for example. I really like Remnant too. That game yeah. is phenomenal. But then you look at it sometimes 
And I'll be like, there's not a lot of debris. Places don't look as lived in. It's still a great game. I, I love it. But when I went back to Division, I was like, damn, you know, say what you want about Ubisoft. But man, they do a good it job with like, like butter. And it runs like butter. Yeah, it, was, absolutely was getting, insane. I was maxed yeah. out. I, I have an FPS cap at 160 and it was just maxed out. All the way through. Yeah, maxed yeah, out graphics, maxed out. Yeah. It's great, man. It's so cool to be able to see those. Some people here are talking about playing Remnant, uh, Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic Online, Daggerfall Unity. I would love to check out Daggerfall Unity. Uh, P.I. says, been playing Watch Dogs Legion. First thing I did was crash my car because I forgot I have to drive on the wrong side of the street. Oh, yeah. Wrong side of the road. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely made a couple yeah. wrong-sided turns when I jumped into that game. Even though they're um, literally driving on the right side. Over there. That is true. That is true. There you go. Uh <clears throat> Or no, no, that no, we are we are driving on the right side. They're driving on the left, right? No, no. What? I drive on the right side, but I'm on the left side of my car currently. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, but you're on the right side of the road. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Regardless, though, wherever anybody is, they always think the other person's the doing it wrong. Side of the moon. Right. Yeah. But yeah, until yeah. you take a run a roundabout, and then everybody's on the wrong side of everything. The first time yeah. I did a roundabout, I was like, okay, well, this is a disaster preparing yeah. to happen. Um, that shirt no, we is have dope. Those all over the place here. So. Oregon Fresh says. Europe has so many roundabouts. Yeah. Um, yeah. All Johnny's missing is a drink with an umbrella. <laughs> that like is true. Fucking... That is true. We need to do one a of themed those, one. Like, coconuts. Yeah. The... Yeah. Um, Johnny's ready for infinite wealth. Oh, it's true. Johnny yeah, looks yeah, like I'm Pierce Brosnan right. in The Matador. I first want to I say thank you that. for mentioning that. That was a movie I was trying to explain to somebody a couple days ago, and I could not remember the name. The Matador. That is a phenomenal movie. Um, really yeah, enjoyed Division Pierce 2. You, yeah, with Pierce Brosnan, yeah. The best scene is when he's depressed, he's crying, he's on his bedside, he's wearing a sombrero, black underwear, black socks, and he's just bawling. And I was like, this is what has happened to James Bond. He is completely become depressed and it yeah. was such a great moment you knew Makes that sense. they had it does make sense you knew they were like try there was a little hint there uh no rest for the wicked can't wait for that game no rest oh, for the wicked oh yes i cannot from the makers of ori i cannot yeah wait right for that game I, I always forget that's a ways out my too, favorite right? trailer yeah it's a ways out i think but it's my favorite trailer from the game awards for sure that and pony island too i don't know which one i liked more <laughs> And I always yeah. get confused thinking Pony Island is the My Little Pony. It's like but... a Disney thing, yeah. <laughs> oh, me no. too, isn't it? No, it's not. I checked. It's not. I, I, I just thought it was a, a joke it's, amongst the guys, it's, but it's not. It's from the guy who made, obviously, Pony Island and Inscription. It's like Inscription, a bit yeah. creepy, scary. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. It has a lot of <laughs> neat puzzles and stuff. Yeah. Um, the other one I'm looking forward to, uh, I'm trying to talk to him about covering it, is Pal World, I think is what it's called. It's the Pokemon like oh, yeah. MMO yeah. with guns and... All kind. I mean, their trailers are ridiculous. Of course, we've seen that before, right? But I'm, I'm hoping it's not that situation. I don't think it is, but it it, right. it looks awesome. I'm not a big Pokemon style fan, but that one in, in particular looked cool. Aston says, when I was playing Mad Max, I could never remember which side of the driver's seat, which side the driver's seat was on. The NPC made fun of me because of it. Oh, because you got in. Do they make fun of you when you get into the wrong side of the seat in that game? I don't. I did not remember that. That is awesome. Yeah, I did not remember that. Johnny looks like Max Payne in Brazil. Max Payne three. Yeah, uh, I, he just needs the aviators. He yeah. does. Yeah, you need yeah. a pair. We all need to show up with glasses and aviators. We need to do an, a, a a Top Gun version of the podcast. First of all, thank you for everybody showing up. That's what we've been playing. I hope you guys have enjoyed your weekends. Urban. There you go. Oh, he's yeah. got him. He's got him. There you go. Look at that. I need to find mine. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is, well, we'll just cover it for a second, the Capcom DRM thing. So I guess Capcom added old D, uh, old or added DRM to old games, which Abzi and I discussed a little bit, which was like, you know, whatever they're doing, it's a, it's a weird thing. But the even weirdest is they did what Starfield got in trouble for, what Bethesda got in trouble for, which was responding. And I read some of these responses, and I got to tell you guys, man, we talked about this before. Hire me. I ran call centers. I can write you an FAQ that doesn't make you sound like a jackass. And it's, <laughs> it makes it worse, right? I mean, it just responding normally, that wouldn't make it worse. If you're like, my name's Greg. I see what you're talking about, blah, 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 but it's not what these guys are doing, man. It's just crazy shit that's going on with some of these companies responding. And I don't know um, what they think they're going to get away, you know. 
what what they think they're getting away with because it just you makes know, everybody issue, look stupid. Your my issue concern is what's gonna happen. Um, like they have Monster Hunter and stuff, right? What's gonna happen to modders and stuff? Like, can you still play with mods? Can you play with mods? Yeah, you can, right? Yeah, well, but DRM, this stops them. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. A, that's a big. And issue. they they actually yeah. said that was one of the reasons was they didn't want mods, which are remember Capcom yeah. said in the past are cheats to them. Yeah, Japanese people uh, aren't even with Final Fantasy fourteen. Like they just hate add-ons. They just hate all mods. I think, but from software, I think it's one of the only ones that just doesn't care. Because, because. Oh, you mean Japanese like, developers are more Japanese against it devs. than Western? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. From what I've uh, been seeing a lot, yeah, they don't like uh, modifications to their games. So Enigma Protector is what it's called, and some games, just some games, have shown up. Capcom Arcade uh, and Stadium One and Two, Mega Man Battle Network. Volume 1 and 2, Mega Man 0, Resident Evil 5. Okay, that actually, that's a big title. Like, that's noticeable, you know. Street Fighter mm -hmm. 30th Anniversary Collection, 30th Anniversary. By the way, just let that sink in. 30 fucking years of Street yeah. Fighter. That is ridiculous. And Strider. Hmm. And I Ghost Trick. Game so long. You remember the crazy levels in Strider that were just like, what the fuck? They were awesome. Those guys knew what they were doing yeah. at, at the same time. They knew what they were doing. And when you're playing it, I didn't feel like I did. But yeah, yeah, they, yeah, I, yeah. I got my ass hard. smoked. I don't yeah, know, man. Same. I don't know, guys. Like, I don't know. Do you guys think this is just a thing where companies are panicking about like losing or getting bad social media and then making it worse? I don't like, know. Like, why respond? Just... Um... Yeah, I don't know because I, I, I feel like that type of uh, control that just never works out. I've never seen it work out. Right. I've never seen it work out or, or anyone responding to anything or like someone just getting canceled and the next day saying anything. Nope. Just shut up. <laughs> just don't say anything. If you're getting heat for anything, just don't say anything. Just let it fizzle. Yeah. Because mm. everything fizzles on the internet. That is true. That, I mean, that is just the way it is. We've seen games go from mostly negative to mostly positive. It's Steam, so I don't really care and don't trust it. But you still get that, you know. You st and and we saw it. redemption arcs. I hate the I term. Agree. I, I hate agree. I agree for the, the most part, but there are exceptions where you have events yeah, that sure. do sort of embed themselves in the public in memory. the zeitgeist forever. Yeah, yeah or no. like in gamer That's true. consciousness or whatever you want to call it. Um, where you get get a certain reputation that then becomes extremely hard. Yeah, as just the one rule I think personally is like never respond right away. You know, maybe let it let it simmer, gather your thoughts. You know what I mean? Yeah, like true. Plan. Right, like plan, gather your thoughts and right then away. If you want to respond, yeah. yeah, it always looks it always looks weird, and never respond with an <laughs> FAQ that's general. I mean, we had a yeah. our, we had a database of six hundred thousand people, which meant we could get everybody calling. They were current; they weren't like YouTube subs. These were people using the system, and our, yeah. the CSRs all had a script that they would that they had generically, but they were all trained on how to not deliver it generically, and then also add data compare in what the person said. So if the person you give them some data, but then you also say, you know. It has you know does it do you think this fixes your issue or do you understand or blah 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 and then you ask some more you say this might be what we're doing games are a little bit more difficult but uh you don't need to sound like a robot because a lot of the complaints on steam are and from gamers are that companies treat us like robots or treat their games mm -hmm. like robots so you don't want to respond like a robot because that's in a weird way subconsciously it's feeding back into that exact same vibe yeah that's like the Big, big thing, even not just in gaming, like in, uh, you know, customer service is really, really important when a salesman is mm. trying to do a sale. And, and, and one of the big things is like, look, we are a big company, but we still respond with like real people, or, real people, or, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah, it's like that connection is definitely, yeah. People don't like to be, uh, did you see, oh my God, speaking of which, um, robots and stuff like that, people got ass mad that I think they forgot. Uh, I think Ubisoft forgot like, uh. They forgot. A, oh, I one saw of the this. Yeah, where, one, yeah, one one voice the actor still the had the speech, the text to speech uh, placeholder, yeah. and then people were like, "Oh my god, it's AI! They used AI! Oh my <laughs> god, they used AI instead of a <laughs> yeah. real person!" It's like AI is way better than. Text well, not to only speech. that, that's how people have been using for doing things for years. It was either a guy yeah. at his house going, "I am the bad guy," and then you fill it in yeah. later, or they were using yeah. old ancient Microsoft people, text to people speech. People were like, "Why didn't you just use one of the devs?" It's like it's just a placeholder. Why doesn't people? Are I, so dude, it's against this right now. It's yeah. insane. Dude, yeah, you don't want damn. to appear like a robot ever. Were you going to yeah. say something, Silver? Did I interrupt you? I'm no, sorry. Just um, like to 
to the to the point of of the responses like it goes but to Absy's point i think it can often be very easy to forget that behind like large titles whether it's ceo or communications director or whatever there's still people at the end of the yeah, day yeah exactly yeah people <laughs> and people they're still to susceptible that. to like emotional responses at times sometimes a communications director is someone with a master's degree in communications or whatever but they might necessarily not have a whole lot of emotional intelligence behind um, what i'm sorry they might they might have a master's degree in communications but they might not have a lot of emotional intelligence um so they might be like lacking in that sense of how to how to word themselves properly or empathize um so as to word themselves in a way that that will work optimally for getting them out of trouble um so i think we need we need to remember that at the end, end of the day these are still people because that is i mean i'm just i'm constantly reminded of it at at every level whether it's elite government or or whatever the pettiness and so <laughs> reign supreme and 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 whatever um often has a very very large influence on on decisions that might seem baffling you know? Uh, yeah and people often demonize like large corporations like the bigger something is or the bigger someone is they demonize them more and more and then they the, that sense of humanity if they're not an underdog starts to like fiddle away yeah and it becomes like an entity where it's like oh they're doing all these evil things i was teasing you know? pete hines by the way because while i like him his response is a lot of times for starfield and for you know you read it and be like dude this guy needs to step away like hire somebody yeah. to do your tweets for you for a little bit because yeah. I, I, and by the way, it's happened to me. So, you know, it's a real thing. You get, you know, you get stressed. By the way, I thought this was awesome. Yesterday, I was sitting back playing games with the guys and somebody DM me and they're like, dude, did you see your ACG videos on Reddit? Somebody complained. He thought you were oh, using that, AI. I saw that post. I saw yeah, that so post. I was like, what? It's like, dude, just come to the Discord, talk to Carrick for like five minutes, and then you'll, you'll, you know, that, that yeah, thought you, would get, someone thought you were using AI, but that's literally the way you talk. And, so. and the, well, not only that, but the best part is I was like, dude, I've got two reviews that are AI. Do you, like, yeah, what are you doing? Yeah, like, it's right clearly there. clearly stated it's AI review, yeah. But uh, that's yeah. the thing with AI, I think, is that it's become such a nerve-wracking problem mm -hmm. that everything is getting wrapped around it. Yeah, and you have... Humor. Yeah, and you yeah, you've got this sort of umbrella of doom around it where it's yeah. like everything we question and it's an easy Paranoia. out too. You <laughs> can be like using it. <laughs> everything's AI. Yeah. 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 It's yeah, it's, yeah. it's de definitely a situation where the more I see it and I've always been every single person if you have a persona gets attacked in some way. I've been attacked you just told me about somebody attacked me I didn't even know about. So it's like yeah. you get these those kind of things happen. Um but I think for these companies they've got the money that they're and they've got people like I'm just talking about it. I can't be the only one. There's other people who could r sort of wrap it around and be like, guys, you want to respond if you want to respond because responding is fine. You want to respond. Let's show you how to do so in a in an elegant way. Now, will you fix everybody? No, but you, there will be somebody who's like, OK, I at least get what this person's talking about. And it's it's sort of a pop out of the zeitgeist that continually revolves around this loop. And it's good loops, mm -hmm. too. We're talking about bad right now. But this same thing happens with good ones, too, where, you know, the same echo chamber gets sort of hammered out and you see it on good stuff as well, where if you, you know, you see somebody mention even in our chat, we, you know, somebody might mention they don't like a game. And you have to make sure that everybody doesn't pop in. Right. And isn't like it's the best it's game bubbles. ever. Yeah, it's all bubbles. I like to pop them. Um, yeah, yeah, but I love yeah, it was, bubbles. It, it was interesting for Capcom. Uh, I would like to see them fix it. I would love to see companies respond more because gamers would. The gamers I care about will uh, respond to that with positivity if they get, even if it's a, I don't mean positivity like, yay, you're screwing me. That would be weird. But I mean positivity like, hey, in a weird way, you're like, at least someone's watching or listening. We always say we want mm -hmm. somebody to watch or listen. And then when we they do, we're like, mm -mm, I don't like that. I don't, I don't want you watching. But <laughs> we'll have to see how that goes. These companies do not know how to respond. I think that's what we come out of this. Yeah, all sort you, of picking I think up you, on you see like the extremes whether someone responding really appropriately and it's like you say like they needed to step away and get a pr person yeah. or yeah. you get a pr person who like the typical thing they do is that they state their values instead of demonstrating them so they will say we 
listen to the community. <laughs> we pride ourselves in taking ownership in doing all this stuff, but they don't actually demonstrate it. They say they say it in the yeah. communicate. And yeah. that rubs people the wrong way. That rubs people as virtue signaling. In, even if they do stick to those values, but just like stating them makes it seem like it's BS. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It, it's yeah. just a lot easier to demonstrate it with a show. Don't that tell. Goes right. Show. Don't tell. Because yeah. telling is just it, it, it works to a point, but you need to show whatever you're doing. And, and maybe we'll see. Uh, maybe we'll see Capcom yeah, remove it comes, this. It cannot. It can easily come off as Johnny to Johnny's point. It can easily come off as performative. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, I wanted to read the super chat. Hero on business. Oh, here on business. Hero on business is even better, though. I'm hero on business. Here, here on business. ACG, a cool gang. Thanks for the gaming. Good vibes. Appreciate it. I, I've actually seen a lot of people talking about the podcast and enjoying the. Uh, we still hammer on things a lot, but definitely yeah, have seen a lot. a lot of people appreciating that uh, it's it's not just a regurgitation of stuff and. Um, no. Even if you don't, even if you don't agree, that's sort of what we're trying to do: is make it a little bit more easy to watch. Speaking of easy to watch, listen. <laughs> I don't know how to say this, dude. Rebel Moon, oh, reminded me of bad, like a bad movie, right? And then I started looking at bad games, games that are rated as bad, and yeah. what games that are bad but good. Like here's a, here's a genuinely bad game just bad it's a mess and then here's a bad game that's good and we were trying to break down what makes a bad game good what like what what's the b factor because it's in in movies john carpenter nailed it he knew how to do it he's like i'm gonna make a b movie and what i've been noticing is nobody know nobody has that art but in games i want to mention one game that i think is genuinely pretty bad that is good and we don't talk about it enough and it's the twin peaks ripoff game um, that's like a Yakuza, you're in the town. Deadly it's Premonition. A, Deadly Premonition. So yeah. we were talking about games. That game popped up, and I'm like, that game is the John Carpenter style of... Right. Of whatever. Like, that. That <laughs> it's got that... You look at it, and you're like, dude, what? Come on. Come on. This is this is weird. Yeah, it's, it's rough. Scuffed it's, to the it's scuffed. It's <laughs> scuffed. It's all messed up. But then when you play it, if you know that, and if you if you sort of know that that's what almost like Twin Peaks, the TV show, you know, in a way that yeah. I that game obviously that guy's seen Twin Peaks at least a fucking half dozen times, <laughs> it right, really works. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, is there any others that are like in the in the Deadly Premonition level that you guys think yeah. are? Well, go ahead. There's that Obsidian one, Alpha Protocol. Tr you think so? Well, it did mean, have uh... some jokey. It did have some jokey stuff. Do you mean like bad as in uh, like designed badly or bad as in technically bad or bad I mean as bad in as in it might be designed poorly, but that the way it's handled, it it comes across it, it becomes almost cherished, even though there's bad stuff. Not I like Valheim had a bit of that. Oh, the MMO Valheim? Remember? No, the uh so it was yeah, like a survival, survival Oh sorry, game that's what I meant. It was but, good, yeah. No? Like it was really good, no? No, I. But that's that's my. I thought it was. It looked very scuffed, and it had lots of like scuffed things Bits that were polished animations that you or whatever. Would say. Like your stuff. But uh, but it yeah. was you know it was fun, and there was clearly something there that spoke to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. Can I ask you something, Johnny? Do you see Deadly Premonition has a thing to it that I don't think that even has, and I don't mm. know what the word yeah. I'm looking for. It, like. Yeah, it's like a B movie, unique, you know. Like a B movie, yeah. E -E -E. It's like it's like it's like campy, campy. That yeah, campy. Uh, which Resident Evil Abzi like is Elix. sort of Resident Evil has a lot of B movie stuff. You you like the first yeah, one the Evil, most for sure. For five sure. for sure. Five, sure. five five first one. I think the first one is very B movie horrorish. You know, they knew the stu, and we don't know. Did they even ask, you know, an English speaker to help them with some of the wordings in their sentences <laughs> no, or not? Recent, you know, uh, the master of unlocking. No, uh, yeah. that's my there's favorite one. Game. <laughs> what are we going to say, Abzi? There's a recent game I, I thought of. Um, there, it was another dead thing. Red uh, Western or West West uh, Evil West or Death West. Or uh, it's the, the, the one that's like a very 
Hard you know, West? It's like a 360 game, but it's uh, Hard is it, West. Is it Hard West? That's the one that uh, was like a 360 brown shooter. No, but not it was... Hard West. Like Hard West was from the up. Uh, no, it was like a third person kind of. You got like this. Thought it was Hard West. Thing. Uh, yeah, I know what it is. Like I'm third, trying to remember the name. You know, yeah, Evil West. I think it's Evil West. Evil West. Is it? Yeah, it's Evil West. Yeah, yeah. Where I thought where it's like it's pretty bad. I mean, even the writing, like the it's very right. campy, very old school B movie, but it's fun and it's 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 a it's a good time but i don't know if people like cherish it to the like like a deadly premonition sorry about my dogs like, I apologize. Yeah. like i think it's just like oh I, I have fun with this game i don't think there's like this do you think that's why alan wake worked elements. because they nailed it with alan the triple a budget kind of like style that. alan wake one alan wake two because alan wake two is very campy do you think they na- do you I think it's think popularities it's i don't think it's campy at all Mm-mm. i don't think it's b movie so i think it's very very well written yeah, it's very well written. Very, Alan very well Wake written, Two. You don't think yeah, the big 100%. dance number in the center and all that stuff is not campy? No, it worked really well. I think, and I, I, don't, I don't think like it, it can work well. It can work well and still be campy. Yeah, still be campy. I mean, it's yeah. yeah, but I think it's uh it's like it was intentionally Evil West. Um, Thanks, guys. Uh, like a like a parody in a way. No, that's what I'm saying. Uh, no, yeah, that's that, you're agreeing that, with that, me. That 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 is often camp. But right. I don't what see I... it in the same light as Resident Evil, for example, where it's it is campy, but that is, like right. it's the whole the whole game, like the way they talk and stuff, you know. Jeez, yeah. Continue, continue arguing Sorry, about yeah. uh, Alan Wake. I apologize. <laughs> I got to figure out what's going on with the dogs. <laughs> All right. Uh, what do you guys think? So no, is it, I mean... is the difference that like Resident Evil takes itself serious in a way, even does though it? it is like sort of silly? Uh, I, I think I mean, it it it, do, it really doesn't. I mean, Chris. Chris, um, I forget, I even forget his last name now, but Redfield at the end of Redfield, five yeah. when he's punching the boulder. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, true. It's not true. exactly uh, <laughs> like during the final showdown with Wesker. Yeah, uh, right. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I it's pretty pretty self referential. Yeah, I love the dogs. Not today says. Yeah, I love the dogs too. But it's they're right now they're being trained on some. They're just alerting for everything. Uh, yeah. No, I. So I'm not in any way, shape, or form dogging on Alan Wake 2. What I'm saying is my no, personal feelings were, yeah. is that they aimed on purpose for what I'm talking about, but they had a better budget, and they were able to smooth out the things that normally occur, like a Eurojank. And then they were able or to like also— those commercials, like those, those very like stupid commercials like you'd see, like that comedy that they put in, in the... like the, an otherwise serious game. You know, they had like those like comedy <sighs> commercials. They had like, you mean like in GTA or something, like a commercial on the TV, like with yeah, Boss like Root pa- parody stuff in the game. Yeah, like a comedy within the otherwise serious game. Yeah, yeah. Also, um, to your oh, point, Carrick, like um, Alan Wake is pretty heavily uh, inspired by Stephen King, and Stephen King is often quite campy. Quite campy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, true. Oh yeah, yeah true. It, that is and true. Also, I forgot about that. I Alan Wake is not space like, that not the best writer in the in the game and and sometimes his like his writing Pros. in the stories yeah, yeah 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 that too is an element of that for sure the the gratuitous uh, obsidian like darkness <laughs> screw that <laughs> yeah. i just love that kind and of thing they Speak- comment on that in the game I, yeah, they do like, they comment on it in the thing yeah. uh julius five dollar super Spain. chat forget uh forgot to post my message lol i got a hot take boys obsidian is a All top right, like three Casey. developer Obs- you know, Obsidian. I don't want to even say, I, yeah, I don't, I mean, I, I don't like Obsidian. rating develop. I love Obsidian, so I don't, no, but I don't yeah, like I rating them. them. I, I just go by, I don't go by anything, but for Obsidian, I've said this uh, multiple times, I don't think I dislike any of their games. So they're, they're up there for sure for me. Um, but yeah, I can't rate them against other stuff, because like, if you start rating, it's like, what is a rock star versus, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if the rating thing really works for me either. Do we all like all Obsidian I mean, I have, games? Uh, yeah, Johnny? I think so. Um, I oh, go ahead, so. I mean, I mean, I would have liked to see the the tank game they were making, uh, whatever that was. Uh, like that always sort of intrigued The what me. game? What, what? The what tank? game? Yeah, Obsidian? You, you guys. Yeah, yeah, I they know. were making, like for, for years, they were making a tank game. Um, like a tank, what? like World of yes. Tanks. Oh, I did not uh, know that. Yeah, Armored Warfare. No, what the? F- I forget. I forget that? the exact name of it. Is it yeah. like an RPG? 
Like, no, it was not an RPG at all. Was... Yeah, he's right. Look at this. What Look at hell? this. 2014. Obsidian is making a game where you play as a effing tank. <laughs> like that... a literally, like a tank, like a like a thing that shoots. By like the way, they tank. did want to call it Armored Warfare. So you were right, John. Uh, John or, oh, okay. uh, whoever said Armored Warfare, yeah. Can tank gameplay ever be, uh, you know, riveting? Or isn't that like very slow? Oh, yeah, it's more sure. stressful. I don't know if I would say riveting. It depends on how they handle I mean, it. But I mean, back when World of Tanks came out, I played yeah. that quite a bit. Um, Man, for sure. sometimes you wake also, up and also, don't think you're going to hear something. I mean, in in Operation Flashpoint, back in the day when that came out, uh, oh yeah, like you had to you had to man and crew the tank, like all of the stations, like the the driver. The gunner and the and the commander, like and that aspect was really fun to do in co-op uh, for me. Um, Let's put our foot down. Let's friends. do this, Johnny. Favorite Obsidian game? You have to pick one. Um, going from memory, you want me to look, uh, Johnny? You want me no, to look no. real quick and give you a list of their games? No, I'm I'm pulling it up right now. Oh, okay. I got a let yeah, me do this list too. right here. Um, I think it has to be Outer Worlds, actually, even. Even though I loved Fallout New Vegas, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I liked Stick of Truth a lot too. Oh, Stick of Truth! Uh, they and, did. What and the grounded. fuck? They did Stick yeah. of Truth. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah. Oh yeah. My grounded God. was super Mad fun. Trey chapter them. Excellent. Yeah. Grounded. Yep. So you think Outer Worlds just because of I what? So. Like what captured you with Outer Worlds? Um, I liked the the skill system. It was really enjoyable to level up in that game for me. I liked some of the stories companions and like how in the end you know like you see your decisions making an impact i thought they they had a really good scale to it where it was a smaller game of that type yeah that i could get my head around um and had a you know i had a great time for like 30 hours and i was out it felt like a good yep. solid compact experience what about you silver best obsidian game Got to pick one. I think, I think at the end of the day, maybe maybe Pentiment. It has to nice. be. Um, it, from, is that um, just because it speaks to you as like you know somebody who likes history and stuff like that, or is it more because it was different as well? It's, or it, it's it's part of it is definitely the his the historical aspect, but part of it is is also just just the difference it makes to like the different um, slants you can give your your central character, depending mm -hmm. on whatever backgrounds and motivations and such that you give him, uh, like you can make him extremely devout, uh, faithful, or like just a, just a Lothario or, or whatever. Like there's, there's all this, there's all this room for, for playing around with it. That, that makes it a really fun experience to mess around in, uh, and see how, how it affects the narrative going forward. Yeah. What what about you, Abzi? Best Obsidian game? Pillars, easily, unequivocally. One Pillars or two? I'm sorry, I just want to verify. One. one. Pillars okay. one, easily, with the White March DLC. Um, yeah, amazing writing, amazing music, uh, great moments, great scenes, great companions. Two, uh, two of my favorite companions. A CRPG that never got old. I loved the combat. Um, it, it just felt good going into encounters every single time. I never went into an encounter and went like, oh another encounter you know right Everything yeah that's fun. a that's Boss a huge really thing fun. in a crpg too when you're able to play yeah. it and not go oh yeah. the world the lore <laughs> they made everything yeah. just worked so well um they, they made me excited for like future games without knowing that future games were going to exist uh just by like the the way they describe like different lands the lore and stuff i loved the choices i loved the way the choices affected your own character like every single dialogue option and how the world reacted to you. And uh, yeah, just it was very badass. All right. I want to read a super chat here. I'll, uh, I'll skip. I'll skip my choice. Julius, $20 super chat. Thank you very much. Keeps the channel going. I appreciate it. The only uh, sponsors we have are those at the starting. So if you want a ACG audio, amazing audio book or a carrot crate, contact me. I'll send you some dirty socks. Basat, 200 Something super chat. I can never remember that. Bit off topic. Needed your input. Why people? Why do people tend to pick okay written edgy characters over well written non edgy? Oh, I got gotcha. you. Okay. So why do people pick or let's say are okay with edgy characters over well written non edgy? Ask a Naruto fan his favorite character. Itachi. Am I saying that right? Itachi. Or Naruto. I T A C H I. Am I pronouncing oh, I that right? Yeah. 
uh, a DMC fan is Virgil? I think that's um, a question that that preoccupies our mind forever. I mean, yeah, especially because I mean, if you, if we slant this toward like American comics rather rather than manga, um, like my favorite X Men has always been Cyclops, um, as like the the guy carrying everything on his shoulders and mm -hmm. like the the first X Men, the quintessential X Men or whatever. And and the question there has always been why is Wolverine the perpetual popular one compared to like he's, yeah. he's the edgy he's the edgy loner he's you know he's the cool guy Cyclops is the not so cool guy and Wolverine is the one getting all the franchises all the popularities and whatnot why is that what what is the appeal of the like the the perennial bad boy as it were um, and I think that that's a question that's always been in 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 the cultural mindset um i don't know i think i think there's just there the anti-hero i think carries a deeper popularity in in the public consciousness to to an extent than than the because probably because it differentiates so much from what people experience in their normal day-to-day -day lives that it's more interesting for them to like fantasize about something they know they can't do or can't quite be in real life. Um, I, so I actually like the well-written somewhat non edgy when we're talking about superheroes. And one of the reasons why is because I like the, a, a per, like when you say this person's solid, that means something to me. Like, this person will be there no matter what. And Wolverine is the kind of guy who would let somebody get beat up just because he's like, eh, we talked about this in the open world Wolverine game. Is he going right. to stop every kidnapping? Or is he going to stop every, like, street fight? No, he's not. <laughs> Cyclops is, I like the concrete characters that let the other characters breathe and do their thing. But you know that right. no matter how crazy these guys will be, you have the underlying, like, concrete, skeletal characters that are there all the time, and everybody else just sort of bounces around them. It's why sometimes I like the secondary characters in RPGs better than the main. The main's usually, like, right. the anime boy who's like, I'm the hero in the fucking prophecy is written about me, and it's like you would not have succeeded in your prophecy with the five other people on your party. And so, to me, I find those other people in the party more enticing than the edgy one because the or whatever he's saying. Right. I will say, though, that I I personally believe that there's something to be said about one-liners and that you want a character with a, you oh, know, for sure. you want the Justin or the uh, the the fucking Raylan who, who drops the one-liners. But at the same time, if you're watching Justified or whatever, you see that there's all these other characters that sort of make him able to do that because they're always there for him no matter how much he fails. So it's like bad boy. And it changes with life, right? Maybe if you have an experience yeah. in life, you might not like that kind of per you know that that kind of person might threaten you a little bit you're like i don't know if i trust this person because they seem a little wishy-washy and it, it's yeah you're right it's age all question i'm gonna go back to my obsidian question because i didn't answer i'm looking at these and i'm trying to remember which one sings to me like when i see the name and beyond a doubt it's tyranny i was oh, looking yeah. at all the other ones and Amazing i gotta tell game. you tyranny dude what johnny what said game does perfect that, right Right, and what Johnny said perfectly encapsulates this. Tyranny was shorter. So it wasn't yeah. your Skyrim in space like yeah. Outer Worlds wasn't Pentiment a Skyrim well. in space either. Pentiment, these are smaller games. And when I look at Tyranny, I love CRPGs, but sometimes I don't want to be in it for 8,000 hours. And I don't know I don't want it because if it's very good, maybe I will. Ty Tyranny right. is one of the few where I wanted it to continue. I was like, oh, man, I want to live in this world. That This is great. This is so different. This is awesome. This is, you know, a place I want to explore. And I loved Obsidian Protocol. I, I forgot they did Stick of Truth. That game is fucking awesome. And even though it's short, they didn't even skimp out on content because there's they so didn't. many different uh, choices you can make that completely change the game. Yeah, it's like meant yeah. to be played, and even before the game actually starts, you make a ton of uh, very crucial choices that shape the actual game. It's really, yeah. really well yeah. designed. I played that yeah. one three times, and each time I play it, even if I make some of the same choices, my brain, in a weird way, sort of constructs a slightly different persona around it each time. It's great. Uh, some yeah. of these people are saying Outer Worlds, Outer Worlds, Outer Worlds. Um. Johnny had a crush on a lady mechanic in the Outer Worlds. I forgot her name. Oh, P P uh, Pavarde. Pavarde. Um, yeah. That was pretty Pavarde. cool. I'm with Abzi. I'm a huge fan of Pillars of Eternity. Um, nice. 
Pillars is absolutely awesome. Outer Worlds was rubbish. If you want a bigger discussion about it, I'm kind of in. No, that's not what it's about. There's always somebody who wants to, like, tell you why you're wrong. We we ain't talking about wrong here. We're just talking about our favorites. Um, Let's see. I had forgotten about Obsidian Aliens RPG. Did that ever come yeah, out, or was that the one on that? that as well? And but they but it got canceled as well. Yeah, I Gambit it was my favorite in the growing wake up of um, of Colonial Marines, or maybe it was right in the lead up to Colonial Marines. It got canceled. Yeah, so for sure. Uh, the Jim Change says best gaming podcast in the game right now. Thank you very much. Uh, Batman is more popular than Superman. Somebody says that's true. Superman's just a little hard to do anything, you know. Superman's boring though. Well, it can be, yeah. I mean, I liked... There's some storylines I've really liked in Superman, but he is... You know, when you get that power, right? It's hard. It's hard to... I heard about the god stuff, sun god shit. I don't know what. I heard that. That mm. stuff was cool. Like, it's just su- like Super Saiyan Superman. Oh, really? Comics. Yeah, yeah, I don't follow comics much, so unfortunately, yeah. I just... I don't uh, grasp that. The Outer Worlds 2 is coming. Yes, it is. I can't wait. Was Arcanum oh, Obsidian? No. Arcanum, Arcanum? was... No. Tri- tri- uh Tyroska, what were they like? A, they have a T in their what name. Magics and uh, what of was Magics it? Obscura. Obscura, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Troika, Troika. Thank you very much, Ref. Yeah, they were, they were the ones who made um, Vampire as well. The good old days, back in the, the day, vampires. back in the day when we had a good Vamp- vampire game. The, the new vampire. Oh man, we talked about it a little bit. The new vampire, uh, like Masquerade, the protagonist. <laughs> Yeah, That's no, I, I talked about it last time. Oh my god, you gotta watch it, man. It's like watching Rebel Moon. Sometimes I like to stick steer clear of those. Also, I want to say thank you to Hate E, Hate M Tiger, who uh, is the one who does very cool icons for games, and he's in the thumbnail. I want to give him a shout out. He he allows anybody to use those little icons that I put for the subjects we're going to talk about in the thumbnail. Makes it very easy for people to see what we're going to talk about. Probably need to make them bigger. But I want to shout out him because uh, he gives them out for free, DeviantArt. And it, again, it's Hate M. Tiger. It's pretty cool. Once again, somebody who has talent that pisses me off because I don't have any. Next up, let's look at our Discord and find a couple things to discuss in general. And we'll just bounce around these. I didn't close the Wednesday one. All right, let's talk about Suicide Squad. Okay. I want to, I'm going to tell you my big thoughts on this at the end, but Suicide Squad, Abzi and I talked about this because the embargo, what did it do? Did it uh, drop for reviewers that morning when uh, we did our yeah, Wednesday? Preview, yeah, we, when we did it, I think it was uh, dropped for previews and then now it's dropped for the general public that played the closed alpha or beta so or whatever. So the previews were fucking interesting, guys. I don't know if you guys, other than, you know, Abzi and I talked about it, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but. There was a there were actual previews that were positive and previews that are negative. But what I was seeing was one of the weirdest. I don't know how to describe it, man. It was tunnel vision would be the way I saw people saying there were absolutely zero positive impression or profession yeah, or impressions well. previews. And I was looking mm-hmm. at it going, I'm reading one right now that says, like, I'm I'm absolutely su- supremely confident in this now. You know, now I get the blah, 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 blah. And I thought yeah. that was a weird conversation. We saw a lot of bounce back for it. But then, yesterday, I believe WB dropped the NDA for fans. And our Discord exploded, man. That was crazy. The moment it dropped, people were like, I can finally talk about it. I liked it. I can finally talk about it. I liked it. And we started to see there's a couple websites that have done some aggregates on the people who liked it, the people who didn't. It seems incredibly high. A little bit like Avatar, where the critics were low. Right. And the user was high. But about four years ago, I told you guys that, and two of these have come to pass. I believe this might be the third one. But I had said that developers and publishers sort of want to put a question in review in people's brains about reviewers. And originally it was like d- day one patch. So anything you report in your review, oh, day one patch will fix it. That was one of them. Then they wanted to stop oh, doing yeah. review code, uh, and including Bethesda. But the other one is this. They let the reviewers post their impressions and then they let the fans post their impressions. And the difference is enough to cause people to question what exactly is going on. Now, I'm not saying that the users are right. I'm not at all saying that. I'm saying what it does is it lodges a question, though, which we even saw in our Discord, where people are like, wait a minute. What is going on? Like, what, what exactly is happening? Why are gonna... all these people, you know, saying yeah. different things? Go ahead. What are we going to say? 
I'm going to sound a little conspiratorial, just a tiny bit. Well, um, that was really conspiratorial, so I don't know if you can beat me on that. You're good. Go for it. So there is this element of like, there's like elements of the game that, uh, you know, the, especially the live service elements and the UI and like all those currencies and stuff that are going to rub people the wrong way for sure. And some people might have, uh, might have like leaned more towards that and focused on that and talked negatively about that. Maybe. Um, there's a other thing maybe that's happening from like the pattern of stuff I see. A lot of the positive review previews came from like the smaller content creators and the users. And, uh, you know, something like IGN, I feel like tends to, I feel like maybe there's a percentage of the opinion that skews with how they anticipate the, uh, the, the people are going to feel about it. For right. example, cyberpunk, where they all skew, skewed positive because they, they think that's what the, the, the gamers want, what the users want. I feel like there is an element of that, like an Ubisoft game, even if maybe it's good, you know, you're going to skew negative and focus on the negative things because it's Ubisoft. And then this one, it's because they went live service and a lot of people are disliking the fact that it went live service. So I think there's an element of that happening as well. And we see a lot of it, like Avatar, where um, the user reviews were much higher than the than the, you know, the normal reviews so i don't know man i don't know it's it's interesting to think about cuz i'm sure the game from what i've seen um the, the the micro the the combat the gameplay itself looked really really interesting and really fun and a lot of people that had skill seemed to express it in that game and enjoy it but it also had the the live service elements and like the 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 empty world and all that other issues that maybe other um you know other larger reviewers mm -hmm. focused on yeah, that I, I would agree with all of that. Johnny, have you tracked any of this? No, I don't think I have much to add to. I think I obviously put it in a good way. Do you do you find this uh, sort of a replication of Gotham Knights, or do you find it the opposite of Gotham Knights? Did you like Gotham Knights? I can't remember. Um, I, I liked some aspects of it. I, I think they, they didn't get traversal right, and that was, for me, right. critical. Yeah, for yeah, longevity for sure. in that without game. a doubt. Um, I liked some elements. I think I think people are having a difficulty tracking this game too because you know they, they, there's so much baggage associated with the live service element yeah. that people are projecting all sorts of bad things into it as well that maybe isn't the case or we don't know yet that is the case. And I think even things like when you look at the HUD and <laughs> you know, people were complaining yeah. about the, the HUD, yeah, which right, I yeah. mean, I, I agree it was very intrusive, right? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. But who knows, very we bad. don't like, we don't know, there might be many HUD options. Maybe you can turn off a bunch of that and then, you know, it's a great experience. Yeah, so, people have said they've been yeah. turning off UI stuff, yeah. Yeah. Is but, that it? Oh, go ahead. Continue. No, I, I mean, want to make sure I you think, have a spot. Yeah. I I think at the end of the day, that doesn't get clicks to, to put out an opinion like that. Like, oh, it, you know, it might be cool. Maybe you can turn off the HUD. No, I think what gets the clicks is like, it's terrible or it's amazing, right? E either or. So yeah. I think maybe that, that's why we start to see the, the big divergence. It's people are going either on one direction or another completely. Yeah. Well, what about you, Silver? Do you have anything to add to this? I don't know if you followed this at all. I haven't followed it at all. Uh, I don't really have anything to add further than what you guys have already elaborated on. I think you yeah. touched touch on it pretty well. Pretty well. Um, it, it, it is very interesting to me because I also saw a couple of people saying this isn't Batman. And I'm like, no, it's not. It's not Batman. Is it's it? like, and there is there is a huge hatred that they're not doing another Batman there's like like a just ingrained, I don't yeah. want this because I want Batman, therefore this is bad. And by the way, I'm not saying it's good. I'm saying I'm actually seeing people say this. So I'm just repeating what I'm seeing. And it's not a small number of people who are saying that. Um, I also want to point out in one of the articles, it said something like, who is this game for? And this always shocks me. Because no games for anybody till it comes out. No, Pentiment, who was that for? We didn't know until we played Pentiment. We knew some of the ideas in it, but you didn't, even I didn't know exactly silver. what Pentiment was. It's for silver. Yeah. Uh, well, I actually, it, weirdly enough, it was also for me enough to say to still get it, even though I, it wasn't for me. It was a weird one. You know, you could tell the quality in it. But 
Yeah. I was seeing this who is it for. And I've saw this before. I think we've talked about the who is it for thing before where it really creeps me out because it's a preloaded it doesn't even make sense who is it for. If we why do we celebrate people doing what they want to do and making and we judge it with our money, which is what the biggest saying one of the biggest sayings in this world, judge with your wallet, you know? So we sit here and we say that and then we turn around and say who's it for? Well, it's for those people who want to buy that with their wallet. It's those people who like it's for those people who, for example, me, I don't know Suicide Squad very well at all. Yeah. I saw two things I did like and multiple things I didn't. The two things I loved, one, no tank, healer, DPS classes at all. All of the characters are completely different. And and that might even be a little confusing at first when you get into it and you're like, ooh, I don't know. Like, how do I know who to group up with? Really what you want to group up is skilled people. That was another thing I saw in some of the videos. Some people couldn't even figure out how to aim in those videos. Now. I could say it's them, but I could also say that game's UI is horrendous. It's in what we saw. It, yes, you can turn stuff off, but what I'm saying is I was watching them play with that HUD, and I got to admit to you guys, a, be, a busy HUD will confuse me, and I'm a reviewer, but it will cause me to go, like, what, um, what am I, what, what blinking thing do I care about? What, what flash of light matters if everything is flashing? If, and by the way, to give you guys an example, I counted up HUD elements and division last night. There's six. How many are in the preview videos I saw? 26. 26 HUD elements. That is, that makes Borderlands look boring. And Borderlands is pretty hud if you really think about it with the numbers flashing and all yeah. that kind of stuff. So I can certainly see people looking at it and thinking the live mm. service plus the HUD Plus all plus the confusing elements and it's gonna and be one of those. You know? It's gonna be one of those. And by the way, that's a solid company problem too. That's on them. That's yeah. on WB. Yeah. WB needs to look at that and say, some people do like the idea of what we're. Oh, maybe we need to, you know, what do we need to do? We need to adjust yeah. some shit. I mean, this is ridiculous. Uh, Silver, I was talking. I, I think you wanted to add something right at the starting when I was trying to talk. No, I was just Sorry. I was thinking to Johnny's point about you know the YouTube algorithm uh skewing positive or negative for for views or whatever i think i think it it has such a huge impact on how sort of the public consciousness on on gaming discourse functions um i mean you look at avatar right and I, and even though you you have the the discrepancy between like the user reviews and the reviewer scores like I still saw like a bunch of saying that it's like more and, and the common consensus there was that, oh, it's m tended to be, uh, oh, it's more than just a Far Cry game. I still saw a significant number, I want to say, of YouTube videos coming up in my feed saying like, this is the worst Far Cry game ever made and and stuff yeah. like that, right? Um, coming up all the time. Uh, so I think that certainly plays a part in how people perceive these things um, and and the binary way in which they tend to perceive them, uh, where it has to be an extreme of some sort. Um, yeah, I would agree, because any extreme works. Christopher, $10 Super Chat. Paul something, something suggests the YouTubers might have a greater vested interest in the game being good because they can make continued content if it hits. Thoughts, opposite. Yeah, yeah. For I, sure. I, I, Opposite. I, that I makes think, no think, sense if I you think, understand the algorithm. I mean, certainly, certainly in my experience, um, the algorithm and YouTube coverage in general tends to skew quite negative. Yeah. Yeah, that uh, as a YouTuber who has friends who do just a game, has friends who do just negative skewed videos, have friends who do, uh, for example, somebody I love, um, Happy Console Gamer, you know, tries to skew a bit more positive. I can tell you right now, negative is where you want to go yeah, absolutely of, there's absolutely there's not uh, even that is like brain dead because when you look at the algorithm itself even even jez gordon's talked about it with windows central uh, you know he's uh, tweet when i've tweeted sometimes he'll tweet on to mine you know he'll respond and even his stuff it is absolutely for sure much more monetarily and financially like rewarding for a person who doesn't care what they're creating to just get something bad it is it's and, not even in the same bailiwick. That, I mean, and, and that's a phenomenon that takes place across all Correct. social yeah. media, yeah. not just yeah. gaming related, Facebook and and whatever, like yeah. outrage drives everything. Content. Yeah. 
What were you going to say, Abzi? I think... I think there's a very, very rarely. I think mo most of it, it, it mostly always happens like that, where where there's like certain trains going. Let's call them trains or bubbles, where uh, where you know yeah, bandwagons. Starfield, bandwagons. Starfield was a big one where, dude, you can make content about that for months about why it's bad, why it's months, and people will consume that. Um, but then very rarely there's something like BG3 or something else where you can also do that with positive, very positive content. But mm -hmm. it doesn't happen as often. It has to be like a zeitgeist where everyone's on board. Uh, it's usually usually the easier one is like the negative negative stuff. And then a couple of years after, when uh, let's say Baldur's Gate three is not getting that much traction when it's positive, oh, people I know will come what you're up gonna with say. A, looking back at Baldur's Gate three. This is why, why Baldur's really, Gate is not a masterpiece. Why, <laughs> why, yeah, 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 yeah. That will always happen. It happened for Witcher. It happened for Fallout. It happened yep. to a lot of a lot of games. Yeah. Yeah. Red Dead, yeah. Uh, especially when you look at these kind of things, the fact is, is that a lot of games are in the medium. They're in the 60 to 80 and yeah. no one likes to talk about a 60 or 80. And now that they've adjusted, the scores have slightly adjusted. People been, some people go skew hard. Some people don't. Um, yeah, there's, I mean, dude, negative, it sells beyond it. I can't even describe to you how instantly noticeable it it would be if I were to go negative on everything, it would be instantly noticeable as yeah, in yeah. my views. I would, I would, it, there wouldn't even be, I mean, it would be financially you need a Patreon anymore. Let's just say that, <laughs> bro. It would be ridiculous. Cause you know, sometimes yeah. when I would attack a thing or whatever, and I still do in the news occasionally, I certainly do in reviews, but when I would do a video and I would just cover it, dude, if I said this game is really good, I would get the long-term patrons, YouTube members. They, skew towards that they want to skew even if i talk about a game bad but i do a good job they'll skew toward it but the quick views that first viral thing if i say by the way if i said no starfield is really good do you think that would go viral oh what no but if <laughs> but i said wait, wait, wait. actually maybe there's a way you can do it where it's like those remember what you know those that we just talked about the only way to do it would be to do this it would you'd be to yeah, say, to everybody who said it was bad is a liar. Here is why yeah. I'm right. Oh, there you go. Negative yep. on yep. the negative. Negative yeah, yeah, yeah. on the I negative. Mean, there, is, that I mean, would be a financially yeah. very yeah, yeah, well. There's, there's very yeah. good reason why trend tabloids transformed our, our entire, uh, yeah. the entire way we consume news. Yeah. Um. So I with, with Suicide Squad, though... I think it's probably going to be a middle one. I I, I, I want to see the HUD fix. Um, I... I like some of the stuff I saw. I watched, I talked to a couple of people who played it long in our Discord a long time. Z uh, thank you to Zombie, who's in our Discord, who gave me a code. Uh, and I was able to play it, and I liked some parts, didn't like others. But I just sort of wanted to step back and be like, it's what I did with Prince of Persia. I like Prince of Persia, but I had a couple issues with it. And I was like, you know what, on this one, I'm just going to step back and see if I think what's going to be said is said. And, and that's not to judge. That's actually in agreement. See, do, you know, what's everybody saying when you're not involved in the review process itself and um it was cool to see people respond to ubisoft because abzi was saying a lot of times with ubisoft and i think what he i don't want to put words in your mouth but i think that what he meant more was if it's a far cry assassin's creed or if it's their yeah, big 100%. you know if it's their big mm, temple kind of things and this isn't it's a it's a new which has fresh which has blah 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 and it's also well done which is great you know that's that that's a great thing about that game but yeah, man, it was an interesting, interesting discussion. And I think here's the other thing. I played Avengers and I played Gotham Knights <laughs> and yeah. I played Suicide Squad and Suicide Squad is better than those. Now, am I saying it's a good game? No, I'm saying what I played was better than those. From what I've seen, only the gameplay alone just trumps everything. I've yeah, seen the, the other tra and we can, I'll, I'm sure somebody, I'm not even looking at chat. I bet you somebody's going to be something along the lines of, well, yeah, but those games were absolute trash. Mm, they weren't great, but they weren't trash to me as a 20%. You know, trash to me as a 10%. It's a never, it's a never touch. Okay. What I'm talking okay. about is I'm... the middle ground, you know? Yeah. yeah. I, I really want, I want it to pull out and do a good job because I, I do like the new I just characters. I want games to be good. I want that games too, to be yeah. good, yeah. And I want new, new he just... uh, villains, heroes, whatever. I feel like... It, it, it just depends um, if they can capitalize on like what I've seen, what, what speaks to me a lot from the previews I've seen is um, it seems to me that they, the way he was using his abilities, it seems to me that the devs 
gave you tools and you can use them in very interesting ways, which could allow for like a high skill ceiling and replayability and f more fun progression as you like learn how you how to use your your move set in like different ways and fun ways. And I right. just hope they capitalize on something like that so it doesn't get boring and repetitive after the because because the game will be built on most like m more repetition than most games because it's just going to be you right. dropping in fighting people dropping that's in fair. fighting people that's very right? fair that this one will yeah. be built on more repetition uh, repetition, more repetition than you than might than see games. in a in a normal you know game of what we would consider like a single player or even a multiplayer that doesn't have all these service things. yeah so progression just has to be nailed for it to do well i think I can't wait, man. I think it's going to be exciting. Um, somebody was saying, don't hate Borderlands. Did I hate Borderlands? I don't hate Borderlands. Oh, no, no. Because I said it had about the said There you go. Was I said one bad thing. Oh, my God. He hates Borderlands. It's not, it's not the way it is, my friends. It's just, uh, <laughs> it's, it's just noticing that there's some things with it that I would have liked to have been fixed. Uh, ACG, is King Shark still voiced by Sly? I have no clue. Um, I'm surprised the new Prince of Persia is a 9 out of 10. Well, we can talk about that. Did you guys see the reviews for Prince? Yeah. The Prince of very, Persia is doing very well. Received. Yeah. Very well received. That's, I, thought that, I thought it would do well, honestly. I thought it would surprise people. It is. Uh, I do wish digital was in. I'm just going to say it. I like digital for Metroidvanias. And I, yeah. I, there are times when I play this where I'm like, oh, I wish he turned a little quicker. You know, where your brain yeah. is like, I right. see that guy. And the analog is like, yeah. no, you don't. Not, not, not yet. You don't. <laughs> God, I gotta move but, it to the left. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but graphics are good. Gameplay is good. Puzzling is really good. Jumping feels good. Um, I had a couple. I don't even know what I would call them. Almost like not animation bugs, but I had a couple little odd things. And there are, I will say, some stretched out save points. I think that was my big thing that I, I don't know if anybody's pointed this out by the way i haven't yeah, got to read reviews for the genre yeah. yeah and this one there were times dude where I, even i was like okay come i need a save point at some point Is it like, like the the backtracking yeah and there or there'll be a mini boss and if you don't fight if you don't beat him your save point is like Oh, yeah. you have to redo it like a segment to get to it. Yeah, yeah. But Abzi brought up one of the positives that they had, Post and, and I agree, which <laughs> is that you can take pictures of wherever you are, and you get a certain number of memories. You take pictures of where you are. So, it, like, let's say there's a door, and it's all the way over here, and you can't remember if you opened it. You can take a picture when you first see it, and then, you know, you're hours later somewhere else, and you can, you know, go back to that memory, hit a button, and yeah, see I, the I screenshot hope more you Metroidvanias took. Do this, yeah, that was man. it. Was a good I idea. Hope, it was a good it, idea, man. Yeah. It worked really well. It worked very well. A lot of cool voiceover, man. Uh, some cool bosses. A uh, little harder, <laughs> I think, than I was expecting at first, but I got into it. It was um, it wasn't hard. It was like mm. I think I expected a Ubisoft game, which usually right. I can hammer through yeah. one or two guys and be like, I don't need to know. But this one was like, mm, no. You sort of need to know. And I, I like that. It just took me a tiny bit to get used to. But yeah, I'm glad, yeah. man. That game is doing phenomenal. I wish uh, Phoenix Rising had done so well because yeah. they well, fucking, they did it to themselves with Phoenix Rising. They released it. PR, lack of PR, game. you mean? Oh. Um, no, mm -hmm. they, they released it. Uh, well, Valhalla and like Watch Dogs Valhalla or something, and right? Watch Dogs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And like Yakuza was coming out at the time and then yeah. Cyberpunk you know, shortly after or something. You said something. <clears throat> before about is this a game like who was asking for this game or who you know uh who is this game for yeah you're, you're kind of saying that and it, it is weird because this is an example of a game that technically it's like no one was asking for it because right i, I mean most prince of persia fans might love the games because of the like third person aspect action yeah prince right. of persia like you know warrior within um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or you could argue some of the older ones are more influential. It depends like where you fall on that. But I've heard uh, from a friend where, you know, she likes the third person ones. And she was like, you know, this isn't Prince of Persia for me. Yeah, and, right. But I think in a way, like, yeah, we don't know in advance, you know, exactly. uh, of, of the, game, the game coming out, whether or not it will speak to people. It might be that it speaks to a whole different group of people who like in this case metroidvania uh but maybe didn't like the other prince of persia stuff and maybe for them this now becomes a cool prince of persia thing yeah it's, it's interesting to me that this is what we ended up with after what i 
I mean, reportedly was supposed originally to be a remake of Sands of Time. That's right? the other one coming out later. Yeah. Oh, oh, it is still coming out. The it remake? is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they're, okay. yeah. They're, 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 Don't I worry, they, Silver. Like, you are just as confused everything. as everybody. They, tra yeah. they must have been in some kind of development line. And then the one got, yeah. they, they decided let's. Because of that trailer that everybody <laughs> hated. Yeah. Know. Yeah. And they did this. And I got to tell them, I'm assuming internally, the moment this hit and reviews hit, they probably got together and said, we need to we now know time. we, we now know what we it. need to do yeah 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 because yeah. yeah, dude it's i mean it's great to see it i i love when these guys sort of nail something on the side because it is a little bit of a palate cleanser from their other stuff um even though i felt avatar wasn't near as far cry as i'd originally uh, anticipated it to be it's very cool dude, to see I just this really hope Sounds of like Sounds of Time remake does really well, so they could remake uh, Warrior Within and Two Towers. Yeah, that's what everyone. Twin Towers. But would you want Towers, Warrior sorry. Within two D then, or are you do you mean a th no, no, no. Re like okay. a third person? Yeah, yeah, the same one, but just a remake. Yeah. Um, Christopher Warrior says ACG. Mr. Matty said that the game might get a day one patch in which damage will be optimized more. Uh, hmm. oh, you mean like. Hmm. Okay, Optimize. so I don't know if that's... I'm not saying that's not true. It absolutely could be true. Um, but you, there's a certain number of hits. You know how these games play. There's a certain number of hits to kill yeah. each enemy. Three for yeah. this weak guy, four for the strong guy, blah, blah, blah. You have to break a shield. So I don't know what they would do. They could probably just say, hmm, how would you do that? Maybe less Optimize damage on you. Damage. But I mean, optimized damage. I don't know what optimized means, yeah. Maybe more on the enemy, on the bosses or something. I don't quite know because I believe mm. most of the guys I've fought in that game and I've played it now for many hours, most of them are more of a hit. Like, hit this guy. Now, I mean, you can get behind him and do more damage if they don't, if they, you know, if you hit him in certain places. But yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I would have, I, I don't know how that would be done, but it is possible. Uh, again, I haven't really followed that one. I just decided to sort of do it on my own. Uh, anything yeah. to add for Ubisoft, Suicide Squad, uh, and like those kind of games? Anything more to add to this entire discussion? When does Suicide Squad come out? February? Well. I don't like it when I see people wishing a game does bad just because it's from a company they don't like. I think everybody should strive to just like want games to be good. And I think games are for a lot of different people. And if something just doesn't jive well with you, if you don't like a game, maybe someone else does. And uh, thankfully, we live in an age where there's so many Games. alternatives that you can find something that you like. You don't have to spend too much energy hating on one thing or, you know, yucking someone's yum or something and just, you know, let people enjoy what they enjoy. Yucking someone's yum? Yeah. Oh, I get I get you. Okay. They're saying yum and you're yucking it up. That is that is a weird, con yeah. that is a weird concept, <laughs> but I get it now. Yeah. I was thinking something way worse. Uh, moving on from there, let's discuss uh, the Sony data. So there are more le more leaks and more screens and more stuff about Sony and service games. Silver wanted to talk a little bit about this. Did you have a specific thing, or was it more about the revenue no, share for live? It was not a specific thing. It was just, I mean, yeah, the general. Dude. I, as a I, potential I, motivator for them getting into... The, more heavily into the service games right yeah yeah i mean i don't know about you guys but it certainly does feel like all of the uh all of the companies are in that oh shit moment you know where we're seeing some big changes microsoft put valhalla in and i still firmly believe there's something going on there that was a very weird add to xbox I don't live know, but microsoft stocks are still fucking going up to the moon baby invest in <laughs> invest in microsoft and who nvidia right so is that what we were joking about? please don't we don't give yeah. investor uh data here we, no, no, we were no, just no, laughing no, about no. it we're not this is not yeah but my damn microsoft though is but anyways yeah sorry go back to your back to no your i was just saying like do you guys i feel that i feel like the companies are just like they're all they all thought service games were going to be big. And now we're seeing, I, Microsoft doesn't seem, Microsoft went almost opposite. A lot of their games we're seeing look to be single player games. They're big, the tent poles, the avowed. But it does seem like at minimum, Sony definitely thought for a while service games would be big. And that might be biting them in the, you know, in the ass a little bit. It's public uh, a perception of those their is terrible. Their first coming, right? Helldivers 2. Helldivers 2, yeah. I like the look of it, though. Did you see the... Yeah, have you seen the trailers? Yeah, Helldivers looks really 2 looks good, man. sweet, man. Is that yeah. UE5? Yeah. And Helldivers 1 was sweet. Helldivers 1 was sweet. Yeah. Very. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that's on UE. Probably. Time for some liberty. 
It, it, do you like it, though, just because of EDF? Because it I, it reminds me a little bit of EDF for some not, reason. Not just EDF. <laughs> not but not like, just. just, like, just I mean, there is certainly... The, there was that heavy Starship Trooper um, sort of uh, camp vibe to it. Uh, that was quite a like the uber-fascist empire with the uber-nationalistic messaging. Um, and one that was quite fun. Uh, and just that... Also, just the the emphasis the game put on how expendable you are, <laughs> like the the friendly fire uh, in that game was uh, quite possibly the most brutal friendly fire ever in in any <laughs> any video game. Like the amount of t teammates you killed with uh, drop pods, like random drop pods or or whatever, <laughs> trying to call down more ammo That's or amazing. reinforcements or or whatever. <laughs> um, and the fact that you were continually, even as four players, you were still confined to the within one screen um you couldn't move beyond the borders of it um you couldn't roam um so that really sort of made just the, a sense of chaos that was really unique to that game uh for a twin stick shooter yeah i mean this is changed into that third person right or whatever yeah third, exactly you know so this will be it'll be what i've seen looks very fun i don't know how <clears throat> long it'll be fun i mean that's the problem right you never quite know how long those game will be fun, but yeah. it looked enjoyable. Have you seen it, Johnny? Have you seen anything for uh, Helldivers 2? Um, yeah, I've seen a little bit. I'm excited for it. I I think they'll be enjoyable to play. And it, it, it is like full co-op, isn't it? Yeah, like, yeah. I think it's four, if I am if I remember a, right. Yeah, four, 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 yeah. Looter shooter live service, yeah. Looter shooter live service. Okay, so... Oh, is it the looter shooter now? Yeah, yeah there's a yeah. It's a full-on yeah. live service now, yeah. Um, EDF has you fighting invaders, and Helldivers, you are the invader. Hmm. Yeah, true. That's also true, yeah. That is also true. Yeah. I like the idea of it. I think it looks really good graphically. Um, I just, again, I want to know, almost like what Abzi said, where those games are more repetitive than the normal game. So it's like, if the, re mm. if the repetition is good... Yeah. Division style, then that's great. And if it's not, that's then... the thing, right? Yeah, like Division for me, uh, that's the only live service game I really played a lot. And I think it's uh, when 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 they do something for for Division, I, I I guess it has to do something that really speaks to me. For Division, it was mostly their level design, right, and their gunplay. Yeah. I really really enjoyed the gunplay. Um, but they did also have a lot of really fun progression. They had a lot of cool stats to look. I liked like looking at gun stats and changing. They and Division Two especially. They I, I really liked like optimizing my gear. Um, and they just have tons of content, tons and tons of content. And it's inventory the, porn, the which I know you like. Thing, the most important thing <laughs> is that yeah, yeah, it's inventory. <laughs> porn. The most important thing I think is that every time you do a dungeon, every time you do something new, it feels like a, a, a the environment shapes the way you play in a different way every time. Or like going into like the museum or something like that, where it's just. It's, it's it's very distinct locations. And for example, the New York DLC was really fun because it had a lot of verticality and really fun. Changed it up a little around. bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, I don't know how many of these companies are going to do the service games long, like I said, because that the negative connotation is so loud now and there's so many ones. So it's hard to jump in with a new one because people are like, why would I go? And we've seen it with Destiny. I remember I would have people being like, I don't like Destiny very much, but why would I go to a new one? Because I've already I'm already playing Destiny. I'm like, damn, that's a that's a fan yeah. right there that you've lost. You need to figure mm -hmm. out a way to capture the new fan to move to the next game, that kind of thing. And it's difficult to know which one of these will. I think it looks good enough that it probably I just, can. I just I have I have a sneaking suspicion that, that a lot of companies might just go the Ubisoft route. <clears throat> With a that, game and then that, like DLC or or microtransactions? No. Yeah, with microtransactions like it, like the Ubisoft store in in the Assassin's Creed games right. and 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 Avatar and Division like, uh, for for cosmetic skins and and whatever. Um, Is it weird to you guys though that we've gone so many full circles on all of the monetization schemes now? It is so crazy yeah. that it started with horse armor, and then people were like, "Oh my god, horse armor!" Then it went to like I don't know. I guess I would say normal microtransactions. Then I went to loot boxes, yeah. yeah. Now loot boxes are well illegal, basically. But we got yeah. Gotcha, which is like, mm, yeah, which is way you know, worse. I, dude. I'd side eye whenever anybody's like, oh, at least we don't have loot boxes. I always side eye at some of these games, going, that's pretty, 
pretty yeah, close yeah. to a fucking loot box right there. And like, you know, it's like it just sort of, it is, yeah. uh, to me, it's, it's close enough to be really uncomfortable, you know, really uncomfortable. <laughs> with it. Yeah. Um, Helldivers 2 is the first day and date game release on PS5 and PC. That's made by Sony, right? Yeah. I believe I you are right. Plan, yeah. Yes, their plan is for all the live service games to be a day and date right. with PC. That is true. Yeah, day and date for yeah. those games. And Amzi and I talked about companies changing too when we were talking about Sea of Thieves and stuff possibly going to the new systems. Microsoft is yeah. doing this where, where they wait like two years or a love year it. for, and yeah, it's like more people just get to jump into the game. And I it, it's, love it. It's not divine. No. It's not, you're not really making a sale on a game that's two years old anyway. Like, you know what I mean? It's yeah. so the idea of moving it to a different platform is, I think, a really, really good thing. Speaking of platforms, mm -hmm. I want to jump in real quick. Did you guys see that the, uh, a, a store may have accidentally leaked September as being the Nintendo Switch 2 release date. Did you guys see that? Yeah, I saw that. In their tweet, it's, they uh, said something yeah. like, we want to release in it, coinciding with the Nintendo Switch in September yeah. 2024. And I was like, oh, shit, somebody's in deep shit. Yeah. If that yeah. <laughs> but then the, what's his name? The guy from Bloomberg. Um, what's his name? Uh, the guy on, Bloomberg? on Twitter is, is Showfield. Oh, Jason? No, Jason. Was it Schofield? It wasn't Schofield. Uh, Schreier. Uh, Schreier. Schreier, yeah. Schreier, Schreier, yeah. Um, he, he he said that uh, he contacted someone from there and they're, they're just guessing. Mm. They said they were just guessing, you know. But they might have been saying that Bro. to cover their asses. Right. Yeah. You get that phone call yeah. late at night from a Nintendo hitman Nintendo that just breathes. Man. Yeah, yeah, he just makes man, Mario man. sounds into the phone. You know. If he's like, hi, it's yeah. a me, I'm Mario. You're like, okay, I get it. I'm going <laughs> to oh, tell everybody oh, I was making shit up. But it's Mario. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or Wario, yeah, which is even worse. If it's Wario, you're like, dude, these guys are serious Waluigi. about what we just Waluigi. said. Yeah. <laughs> just a phone call with like beep and boop sounds, and you're like, those are Nintendo yeah. classic game sounds. I'm fucked, mm -hmm. and I need to switch this off. Um, uh, just the uh, the the um, the music cue from um, like the underground uh, in the old it, Mario the Brothers. old Mario's in the under. Yeah, just playing over and over. Yeah. Is Fallout 76 on? Is Fallout 76 on PlayStation? I don't think it is, right? Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah. Is it okay? Because I was yeah, going to say so. those any of the grounded was one we had talked about where I thought grounded might be a game where they just say screw it after you know two years let's throw it on whatever. Yeah. You know yeah. those kind of things make sense for it's a company. Good idea, man. Great idea. It is, dude, because your company just makes some money the on the tail line, end finally. Yeah, and the bottom line, more people get to play. That's the bottom yeah. line. You know, that, yeah. that ties into like one thing that I mentioned in the topics is Hogwarts hit hit 22 million. Let's sales talk about it. Right. And did so after opening up to the Switch as well, right? Yeah. So the oh, game came out on the Switch. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, you can kind of see it like it does benefit a lot when you have a game open up to other platforms after oh, for sure. the initial, the initial release. bump. Yeah. Yeah, especially if it's a good game, obviously. You know, Hogwarts was a solid game. I don't know how well it runs on the Switch that, you know, I would be interested in. <laughs> Not great. But it runs. Yeah. It runs. People it beat runs. it. If you can beat it, yeah. there's going to be people who buy it, yeah. I guess, and, would be the easiest way honest, to say it. The average Switch enthusiast might not care about You're, like, No, dude, graphical. you are so right. You are so right. right. Yeah. Like yeah. He, an animal, uh, what's it called? What? Uh, Crossing. Uh, animal oh, okay, Crossing, okay. yeah, an, <laughs> an Animal Crossing <laughs> enjoyer is not going to be like, dude, the foliage looks crap. No. <laughs> Can you imagine an it. Animal Crossing guy going, this is not 144 hertz refresh. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah, not it's... getting this game. It, it needs to hit they 120. They just care about how many animals they can vacuum up. Yeah, in the, uh... right, right. <laughs> I can only back them up yeah. two animals, therefore game sucks. Yeah, they're not. It, it definitely is a different, you know, group. I like the idea, man. I like more people playing mm. it. And like Abzi said, yeah. the bottom line is more people play it. But also, the bo it helps the bottom line of the companies. It's called a bottom line yeah. for a reason. If you go below it, yeah. you're in deep yeah. shit. So it's like yeah. it all and makes I, and sense I think to me. Even Sony is bucking to that trend because like most of their games are now like PC. pretty reliably coming out a year or you know a couple years after. Yep. I think that people stuff. do not get it that, like, we have changed whatever was going on. And this all started with them going from PPC to X64. Like, when they jumped processor types and ports were easier, you could, I mean, it only made oh. sense. It's like you start looking at these consoles yeah. going, mm, there's not it, as it, much it port. It now becomes low-hanging fruit. It does. it's almost like. It, it does. 
What we don't want, Johnny, is them treating it like low-hanging fruit in the ports, right? That's the oh, one thing we're worried about. Let, let's just... Well, I mean, and Horizon and had some issues day one, yeah. Last of Us remake. Go ahead, uh, Silver. I'm sorry. Just uh, it, It's also helped, of course, that, that they've all sold, like, since Days Gone. Um, yeah. Yeah, they've all sold. Yeah, it's it, it's going to be interesting to see how things go and I mean, how God gamers... Of War and Spider-Man are among the top rated on Steam. People love those games. Dude, you know, you know why? And, They're yeah. good games, good ports, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, true. Yeah, that's stranding too. So and I just had to throw it on there. <laughs> I don't know. Was it a good? Let's PC do an awkward port? silence that's with yeah, Abzi yeah, yeah. right now. It for was that one fucker. of the first very good well, implementations was, of DLSS was. two. Yeah. Or okay. 1. It was a very good implementation although, of a although, port of a bad uh, game. Not, <laughs> not, not, not for I'm me. Joking. If people, if people remember, um, like I did stream it, I think, and uh, at the time I hadn't updated my driver. So I got some pretty gnarly uh, texture bucks. <laughs> got to do those drivers, baby. Yeah, I had a driver problem yesterday. I had updated it, and you know you're supposed to reset your PC. They say you don't need to, but that's just yeah, flat bullshit. You should. And yeah. I'd forgotten. I got ready to play some Ubisoft Stutters. games, and no, the PC no. was... It lost its mind. It was switching the screen of Division like 60 times a second. It was almost every refresh. It was going like bang, 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 different screens. And I was all... <laughs> And the, I was trying to what talk to the guys, fuck? and my voice was going up and down because Discord was using it was trying to like figure out what I was trying to talk on. I was like, gah, 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 gah. it yeah. was a disaster. Rebooted it instantly, fixed. It's like I always tell there people, man, go. reboot your PC occasionally. And I reboot it twice, uh, twice a week yeah. minimum. Yeah, if in doubt, reboot. It's yeah. it, dude. It is a thing. I mean, it is. It's just. Dude, it's unfortunately quite literally a thing. like sometimes I, I'm I'm gonna like stream and stuff has stopped working you know like yep. my camera a pcie card is not getting the video and literally you just restart and it's yep. magically Wait, back on johnny you get you get issues on your pc well magic technically <laughs> that's not the gaming pc though because <laughs> yeah. i have a stream oh, it's not the gaming oh, pc okay, okay, gotcha. there you go. not the there gaming you go. pc still safe you okay, still like okay. doing no, the two because you can really separate worrying about your cpu usage and all that shit, right it, you it's, just um, don't worry it's that and then it's also that i know even if the game crashes my entire system the stream oh, is still absolutely up. right so your stream is still working to chat with people just reboot my pc and it just becomes like a console in a way you know just plugging mm -hmm. out the video from it yeah for sure what do you guys think about all of this and companies moving titles uh be nice to one another jesus christ but what be i'm nice. saying is after a year <laughs> or so what do you think? Personally, I still sit on the fact that you're not losing a sale because it's two or three years down the road and that game isn't going away on the original. So if the library matters, you still have whatever library there is. And it's a you're able to jump on, you know, you're able to get more gamers. I mean, look at like Sea of Thieves, huge number of people playing, right? But huge -er if you go to PS5 sure. or Switch. Yeah, like, for sure. And it's a great game and I want people on PS5 to play it. And I want crossplay. Yeah. Sony just needs to in cut the line of bullshit and just be yes. like, yes, everything we're allowing crossplay. Cross yeah. Yes. Everything needs crossplay. And yeah. dude, division is a pitch for that. Like you have all these <laughs> yeah. people at division, and I'd be like, everybody, we're gonna play division. Yeah, they're like, okay, gated. great. Yeah. And they're like, I got PS5 Different version. I'm like, let Aw. alone like Game Pass version with Steam version. Like, come on, we're on the yeah. we're both yeah. on PC. Let's Yeah. We're that, both on that, PC, right? At this that time, uh, that surprised me. Yeah, that mystifies you, Johnny. Go the, ahead. The, Sorry. Yeah, the because we've heard from Victor from you know Dark Tide and mm -hmm. and Vermin Tide that that apparently is pretty complicated getting the Game Pass pool to play. Oh, nice with he the did Steam say version. that, didn't he? Remember? Yeah, I, yeah. Although he it, didn't he didn't get into the details, but it mystifies me to this day that that's like a technical challenge. Right. For I mean, I. I Especially, I, I don't understand what would be the issue there with Division, because the, the, the Division doesn't run its, um, uh, Division 2 doesn't run its multiplayer through Steam, it runs it through Uplay, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So, Trust me, none of us so, are making an excuse, we agree, bro. So, so <laughs> Xbox would run it through Uplay as well, so you would still tie it to your Uplay account there, so you should be able to. You should. You should. Yeah, you Thank should. you. You should. You should. <laughs> and you can't. Like I that, don't you... understand how you couldn't. 
<laughs> yeah. Because they, for whatever reason, have just not, it's not a thing right now. Like, it's, yeah, it's not you, important You know, to them. like, you know how some games create their own, like, friend list system? Um, you know, think about, like, Path of Exile or these games, like Diablo, you go in and uh, some games, you add the friend to the platform, like Battle.net or yeah. Ubisoft, yeah. you know, Ubisoft, you, the, the friend stuff is happening in the launcher level. But many other games have it within the game. So, like, you know, you have uh, a separate friends list within the game itself. And that allows you to separate from the platform or the launcher. So the that, best... that's why I, I always oh, wonder oh, why they don't just do that. You know, no, like you I don't have. I don't know. I, I I was wondering sometimes, Johnny, does it have to do with they have different versions for whatever reason and there's a version mismatch and they're worried about? I have seen like rolling out different versions. GeForce for... now has a different version, for instance. And there's been times yeah. where like, you know, sometimes it won't connect or it, sometimes it won't start. But um, yeah, dude, I agree with you. Like, it seems I don't think any of us would disagree. It it absolutely it should yeah. just it, it should just work. What I was going to bring up work, right? was I remember <laughs> the worst launcher story. I've ever heard was you, I believe it was Red Dead 2, when that when uh, for, that was release. ridiculous on release. And I remember just hearing yeah. you in the Discord going like, I don't understand what the fuck is going yeah, on. Yeah, because I couldn't play the game on PC for like two weeks on release because of the yeah. launcher. Like it was broken for me. Uh, banned from YouTube, $20. Tick, tick. If you could bring back one defunct game company, what would it be? Personally, I want the Sonic team back. Ooh, Sonic. <laughs> Sonic team. A team to come back. Defunct. Uh, team. The, the, the ultimate answer, I mean, Maxis? going back 20 years, no, would be oh. um, Looking Glass. Looking Glass. Yeah, that'd be sweet, right? That would be, I mean, that that's like an all-star team, too. Um, huh. I would say probably one of but the I ones mean, EA guys, killed. Those guys are still around, just not at Looking Glass. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah, not at Looking Glass. For me, it'd be like the, the guys who did all those old games that EA destroyed. You know, EA's got the little graveyard joke. Little meme of all the companies they they bought and destroyed. Right. Yeah, um, Maxis is probably mine. There, Westwood right? is right up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those, mm. I mean, there's a lot of. I this is gonna sound really weird, so bear with me. And this isn't even for me. I'll take one for the team. In a weird way, I wish the Metal Gear Solid guys were together in some way because I do think people want another Metal Gear Solid game. And like, it. Proper I don't. One, I don't man. think. It, what'd you say? I just said a proper one, yeah. Yeah, a proper one with everybody involved. And again, yeah, I'm not, not even a huge Metal Gear fan. I'm just saying... Not Survive or Metal Gear Survive. <laughs> 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 that game. The game was balls. I don't know if you heard the question, Abzi, but is, is there one defunct yeah. uh, company, like developer that's gone underground, been been destroyed by EA or a big company, or yeah. just fell Eidos. apart that you want? Eidos. Yeah. Yeah, I, I want the SX to come back. Yeah. And a proper day SX because the well, last one was cut uh, short because of budget budget issues and stuff like that. Cause it was a fantastic game and then it just ended and it's like one of those games where you're like, Really? It's just gonna end now. I wanna play more. You know, you were just getting going, but you know. Yeah, I just remembered how old I am because when you said uh Deus Ex comeback, I was about to say no, Iron uh, Storm original. was Deus Ex. Iron Storm and then yeah. <laughs> and then no. Yeah. Uh I mean Oh, oh, for the first one. And, and sadly, a lot of the also a lot of the indie devs that um are making a a, a spiritual successor to that, like Core DK, are also um you know getting getting fucked. Yeah, it's in dev hell now. I think Core DK. I'm not gonna shout anybody out or anything, but like I so there's a couple people I was talking about the current all the shit with all the companies and Embracer did come up. In the discussion, it was like, you know, the stuff that's happened there and all this kind of things. And um, one of the things that I think sucks is that when these companies run into problems, they don't resell back exactly what they bought. So they buy like they'll buy five IPs, whatever, and then they, you know, they're in trouble. They want to resell them. They're not they're not reselling that package identically. It almost never happens. It's almost like if you collected Magic the Gathering cards and you bought them from eBay and 10 different ways it doesn't mean you would sell them back identically or you might put them as a package group what have you and then it becomes unbuyable by another company or another person they're like well i've already got three of your five cards i don't need to pay more to buy these three duplicates or what have you and 
What I think one of the big problems is with like Embracer, because they own all the IPs I liked, is that most likely they're trying to sell them in a way that is probably... It, I, I mean, if I was a big company, they tried to package together 10 IPs and I just wanted, let's say, one of the IPs we've talked about. That company is probably like, no, I don't, I don't want these other IPs. You know, they don't fit our, what do you call it? They don't fit our library of games. We just want Deus Ex. Or we just want, you know, one of the thousands they've got. I don't know. They've got so many, man. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. And whenever you mentioned, I got instantly depressed because I love that Cyberpunk has fixed itself to whatever it is, but I feel Cyberpunk is so fucking underused right now as a as a g genre. As a genre. Yeah, Shadow like Rondo. Syndicate was ancient. Uh, there was Syndicate. There was Deus Ex. There was uh, what'd you just say? You just said one. Shadowrun. Shadowrun. Shadow there were all these IPs, and Shadowrun even is lost. I don't even know Give where that ex is. In exile or something, man. Did it go to in exile? No, oh, I want it to. Oh, you I, want it to. You want it to. Yeah. yeah, that would be that would be awesome, man. Let's go, Microsoft. Yeah. Buy it and have them work on it. Doom Reaper says, do you think game stores would offer or should offer dynamic pricing on bundles when you already own an item or two? Oh. That would be not very nice. That would be nice. Yeah. But it, yeah. That, that would like be nice. Steam, where it says, like, hey, you, you own this own DLC. This. Yeah. But I think that just warns you, because I've bought multiple yeah, DLC it, it packages from you. Steam. It, it doesn't actually <laughs> take it away really? from the worst is Sims. <laughs> Remember when Reg was teasing me because I bought a bunch of Sims DLC and I had already owned it, but I bought it on a different store and I was like, oh no! And it, I, at the end, I didn't even return it. I was like, well, you know, that's on me. It should be a lesson learned. Yeah, man, it'd be great, right? You get a little 10% uh, yeah. off or, you know, it's... That would be wonderful. That would, be, yeah, that would be... But here's the thing. When you go into a store and you already own something, they sell it as a group. You can't say I already own it. I guess the thing with digital is you should have a certification that says you do own it. You know, uh, Microsoft owns Shadowrun. I know Richardson, that, that or Big Mac. You've got your real name there. Um, yeah, they own it. Uh, what I meant by I don't know where it is is I don't know if somebody's developing something for it. Yeah. I don't think they are. I think that everybody, back when Cyberpunk first released, a lot of people probably got very nervous about any of that. And now that it's fixed, people are probably scrambling. Yeah. I'm still telling you, man. I think they're also seeing a lot Phil of Phil Spencer, the, uh... listen to me. Shadowrun first-person shooter. Go ahead. Sorry, Silver. Yeah. Yes. No, uh, I think they're also seeing um, a lot of the popularity of some of the cyberpunk indie games that have come as well. Uh, we want it, man. We want it. If you did mention yeah. dude, Shadow of a Doubt isn't even really cyber. I mean, it is, but it's like, it's got all this other. But every time I talk to somebody, there's that, they're that sh you mean that, sh you know, like cyberpunk detective game? And I'm all, well, yeah, a little bit. You got but it, like it's Valhalla, which is amazing, where you just play a bartender in the cyberpunk world. You got. Um, oh, I didn't even know about that one. one where, where, where you deliver, you're like a delivery person. Um, fuck, I forgot what it was yeah, called. Cloud punk. Was great. Yes, cloud punk. Can I point something like out this... real quick? Because Coolabon says, Neocap. Coolabon oh, says, yeah, I bought a bundle from Steam and it gave me a discount because I already owned a game in the bundle. So he says, oh, at least he's smart. had it. That's so I, I don't buy a lot of those. Uh, but the last I heard is that it, it may, maybe it doesn't do it for everything, but if it does mm -hmm. do it, Steam, everybody needs to do what Steam does, except for the 30%. Yeah. Except for the 30% that they take from devs. Oh, it's yeah. time Gabe but, gets off his fucking throne made of baby skulls mm -hmm. and cash and drop that to like 10%. 10% I could live with. Yeah, I definitely yeah. had that happen when I buy a bundle and it oh, okay. only adds to the cart the stuff that I didn't have from okay. the bundle. Okay, well then... But I don't know so, if it always does it. So if the bundle's on yeah. sale, it sells, it does, it does a sale sale, basically. It, it says, like, here's the bundle for 40 but you already own it, so now the bundle is 20 Well, it's like maybe you already own the base game, so mm -hmm. they don't charge you that item from so the bundle. I've never experienced that. I'm trying to figure yeah, out how they would do the 20%. Happens. Would they do the 20% on the whole, or then once you add it, because, yeah, so you know... Go ahead, I'm sorry. The discount usually is applied to, like, all the items in the bundle, so it would be the the dlc and the base game for example right and let's say you already own the base game i've had it where i i can safely buy the bundle and i can see there that it's not charging me for the base game it's not included oh, yeah. in what i'm buying yeah, 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 yeah right that, but my question my question and i i'm pretty sure that's not what we're talking about i could be wrong i think what we're talking about is if you do how does it do the so let's say it's 50 percent off for the bundle where does it apply the 50 percent Prior to, to like removing the main item. game or or after? No, it would be like each item is discounted to a certain level, oh, okay. like okay. The, the DLCs. 
That's fair. Um, and then you pay for that. Yeah. Okay. Great. But all right. But yeah. I, I, yeah. Some people are saying chat they have the same experience. It might not be for everything though. Yeah. Because it, it, I don't know if it is because I mean we've had people even in our chat in the last like let's say you know couple Although, months. I, I, it's also it's also been a long time since I've bought anything it has in the for bundle me too. where yeah. where I own something. So maybe mm -hmm. it's something that's changed over the years. But I. I've certainly had bundles where of DLC and stuff where I've owned stuff uh, as part of it where I didn't get any discounts. That's what I was saying is I do remember buying a bundle and the cost seemed to be the same, but I just didn't get the, I already had the main, I didn't get like another, yeah. uh, what's it called, code for the main they just, but it was still yeah. the same. But that could, that was a long time ago. I'm the same way, and I see people yeah, saying got, that they didn't get one and people saying they yeah. did. So it could be the type of sale too, or it could be that Steam's it fixed itself in this amount of time. Steam's had some issues. People like to think Steam is perfect. It's had a lot of issues in its time. So any improvements is, you know, are good ones. That's what I would like to see. Uh, somebody also here had said, uh, um, Chris says he thinks it applies to each item separately. That's what I was wondering too. If like you can get that little mm. like 50% at the, at the end versus 50% on the whole. But then when you buy it, it removes one and the percentage is skewed. So if they do it, Epic should do it. If Epic does it and they do it, Uplay should do it, right? Like these digital companies, they need to make quicker changes. If somebody does something, the other companies need to just be like, we're doing it. Which, yes. Epic needs I, to step up their launcher game, man. They really, really yeah. need to step up their launcher game. They I mean, I don't think there's even a way to get like a, an FPS oh. count or anything like that in some of these. Dude, you can't even turn off the overlay. Stuff. You can't even turn off the overlay. You, that is yeah, weird. Got, I found that like, in that game we were playing. And, and I was like, I most, can't turn it yeah. off. And it does the most annoying sound when you get an achievement and the oh, only way true. to turn it off is to turn on do not disturb mode. And then if you turn on the do not disturb mode, you have to turn it on every time you relaunch a game. There's so many stupid issues. Like, uh, at least they have a cart now, though. Do they? They do. I think so, right? Yeah. yeah. Remember Dude, when that first started I don't know up? if they do. <laughs> see, yeah. I lived through the Steam days where you couldn't do any, you couldn't move games, you couldn't do anything, and you see yeah. these yeah, changes. Yeah. And my opinion has always been for digital companies, they should look at what's out now, right? So it's like we're coming out in January. Yeah. I don't care if you want to match Steam 50 years ago. That makes no fucking sense. Match it today. You yeah. know, so therefore the bump isn't big. Yeah, you have to compete with it. Today. Yeah, to, otherwise it's to, not really competition. It's just follow the leader. Ago. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah exactly. Ago, right? Yeah, twenty years ago, I guess. Yeah, I don't yeah, know how long Steam way has been around. Trying to do but... it now is by exclusivity, and I think they should focus on making their launcher better than in exclusivity. Look at what happened. Launcher to, or store? Uh, do you mean really just the storefront versus the a launcher? Right. The launcher, the storefront, everything, yeah. the U the UX of it all. Um, um, look what happened to Mixer by by Microsoft, the streaming service. All they did was try to just yeah. um, buy buy creators and that's not the way to do things you just have to make your platform better dude yeah. do you know the best way to point this out completely hating oh. steam back in the day so did when, I. Um, it launched with a half-life 2 because it was this yeah. online on only uh <laughs> uh sort of drm thing almost that got bundled with it and i was just like what what is this what, what is, is this <laughs> extra thing yeah. what i was going to say is a great example of all this guys the company's trying to match but not match or trying to get everybody at one time is threads and blue sky and the other social media <laughs> networks where they're like oh people are mad at twitter it, the thing about being mad as a group it doesn't really always enact action sometimes people just sit at their home and they're stu they're mad so you get people yeah, i'm leaving that's twitter what they do and most you, of the time that's what they and you go to threads or something i've seen the biggest <laughs> i've seen youtube the biggest creators you know, the companies post something, get like three likes, you know, and you're like, damn, this place is dead. <laughs> you yeah, know, because I mean, even if people hated it, they give it a like. What were you going to say, uh, yeah, Silver? Sorry. Just that, 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 I mean, that's one of the most frustrating things generally. So much of that anger and outrage you see is purely performative because it doesn't actually lead to any action. Yeah. Like people don't actually and act on that. I mean, I've that hated you guys since day one. I haven't kicked any to, of you off the podcast. To actually do something about it. <laughs> yeah, um, right. Sorry. Yeah. No, it is true. That. It is true. Heard what? I didn't say anything. Jared no, asked okay. us a question. What game would you all like to play? Uh, oh, listen to this. This is good. What game would you all like to play if they did it like uh, Ready Player One? That kind of level of, of VR and integration. So... Mm. <laughs> Prototype? No, I'm just kidding. Um, oh, God! Please never mention that game again. 
a, a um, game that we would like to so you'd leap in right and it's like or peripheral the new tv show where the, it's like it looks you know it's just like real the, people sir, what was the question again? like what game would you love to be able to jump into at a level of ready player one which if you haven't i don't know if you've seen that but it's like the, where yeah. you jack it it's like vr real yeah. you know um no man's sky maybe except no man's sky combat sucks ball Dude, I um, think Red Dead Redemption 2. Ooh, just, Red yeah, Dead Redemption 2. Yeah. Oof. That would be cool. You would get um, shot in like two minutes, though. Or bump your shot, horse yeah. into somebody <laughs> in the world. And yeah, or fucking... get an infection and, and die. Like... <laughs> what about you, Abzi? Did you have one or was it Red, was it Red Dead? Some, something that has telekinesis and flying and shit. Something that allows oh, me to do power. stuff that I can't do in the real world. Like oh. be able to fly and feel how maybe Harry like. Potter or something or be, like that, or be able like to Hogwarts? do like telekinesis, Hogwarts. Yeah. Like something like I want to be able to feel what it's like to like have like an uh, another sense or another like yeah. What is it I know like what you to mean. be able to tell the future or be able to stop time? You know, like that concept. I can't really imagine how. Yeah, it would be like. I think how... flying is a really good one too, right? Flying, Just yeah. like... So yeah. listen to this. I'm so nerdy. Well, My friends and I spent about two hours. Talking about what yeah. Keanu Reeves must have felt if he was in the Matrix when he first learned to fly. So he puts his fist down, the ground comes up, what we saw in Superman as well. And then he like poosh, goes in the sky. And I was like, what would right. it, does it feel like tension in your stomach? Does it feel like a nervous energy that's different? Because, you know, if you're getting ready to punch, you can feel your body activate and you're moving towards that punch. Then it becomes instinctual. You still know you're doing something physical. But if it's a whole different sensation, what would it feel like? What, what does flying yeah. feel like? Not... Yeah flying yeah, but the mention, force of like yeah, or the energy yeah, you're yeah. expanding does it come out your feet uh, yeah something that yeah something that and, like is propelling and, you right? exactly and exactly that, and yeah. in, and in that specific instance there's also the question of what has Keanu in that mo moment transcended even that so he doesn't even sense any anything physical because he's in the air tuned himself so much with the matrix yeah, all yeah, through even yeah sensing like the the physical momentum of the flight or whatever. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah like right. Does he feel like he's a fish in water almost where it, to him it's normal? Believed. Yeah. He, believed. Yeah. he believed. He believed, dude. Believed. He believed. But believed. what do you, do you feel like your feet pushing you forward or do you feel like you're slipping <laughs> through air or do you feel like a nerd, like you got to poop, you're just but you don't poop? You know, you're, you're right. You're no, that's it. That was, a, that was a question. It was like, do you feel like you have to poop really bad, but you don't? And so therefore, yeah. do you, you know, is that why? I think it's that feeling. Hang on. Watch Superman when he flies. He always looks like he has to poop. He's always like, oh. and I was all, maybe he's got to take a dump. Sorry, Johnny, go ahead. Yeah. I just yeah. had to get no, that out. No, it's like you have to hold it in or something. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think it would be like uh, the the same like empty stomach feeling when you jump from a high place. Like, oh, the, the, yeah, uh, the, the butterflies, almost. Yeah, like like your stomach is like mm -hmm. going Lifts up, up. And yeah. it feels like yeah so i, th I think it's maybe something have you like ever had that. a dream johnny where you do fly and that your stomach does do that because i've had that yeah. where i have a dream and my stomach does the nervous gurgle yeah, you know i where usually I'm like, wake Ooh. up uh, i know so like it's know, so different than it, yeah yeah it's uh, it's unfortunate for me in dreams pain feel like numbness too so if like i scratch my arm or i get yeah. hurt it never yeah. hurts it's numb it's almost like the it's, limb yeah. is falling asleep it's the oh, same I've for me. I've, some, I used uh, to have dreams. Sorry. Oh yeah, go for it. Sorry, yeah. No, go no, ahead, Johnny. And then I've flown okay, go ahead, yeah, you go, Then you go, go, Johnny. Ahead. When do you guys just, go? Okay, just, it was literally just a small comment. I've flown in lucid dreams before, but it's always. Do you do lucid dream lucid dreams? You can. I used to. I used to do it a lot. Yeah, I, I had like a totem, uh, basically, where it's like, I, oh. like daily, like in in real life, I would look at my watch and be like, "Is this a dream?" and then tap it. And then, and then I think a couple times in the dream I did that, and then my watch just broke, and like gears started flying out. So I was like, "Okay, I'm in a dream." And then I started. So it flying, worked. The totem out. worked. Yeah, it works, man. It works. <laughs> what were you gonna, What were you gonna say, Johnny? Sorry. Or do you? Yeah. No, it's I, I was right. gonna say I used to have as a kid uh, um, dreams of like some type of predator, alien thing chasing me around, mm -hmm. and sometimes uh, it would like catch me and like cut me. It had like blades yeah. and stuff. It was kind of like a full on like horror movie type nightmares I used to have with that. And it was the weirdest feeling because let's say that like he cut my arm entirely. I didn't feel like you said, I didn't feel pain. I just felt this like something's wrong. Numbness. Yeah, right. Numbness. Uh, yeah. Very uncomfortable. Somebody said that's emo Carrick. Uh, Powder Cake says pain feels like numbness. Emo Carrick 2024. It is true. Pain I, I... feels like numbness. <laughs> I you know, feel like... so numb. <laughs> um.
I have it, oh, where, yeah, you yeah. know, where they say in your dream you can't read time. I still remember one time there was an atomic bomb going off in my dream, and I looked, and the time oh, read geez. correctly. Oh. And I was horrified when I could tell the time in the dream. And I was like, I'm fucked. Like, this is real. <laughs> and in the dream, I kept pinching myself, but I felt the numb. And I still, yeah. in my brain, in my dream, I was like, oh, fuck, that's still real, still real. And then finally, yeah. I woke up right before. And I've I was had like, oh, times God. where I, I check know. books because they say, you know, like, can't read books in a dream. Have nonsense content in dreams, right? They don't have like actual words. Um, but very often they do in my dreams. Oh, so shit. It, I've also been in that position, Dude. like, hold what on. What if your dreams are real life? What if the <laughs> dreams are real, Johnny? And we're <laughs> all. We're all I hardly ever Dude, remember uh, my dreams. <laughs> yeah, what some if, people are like that. Go ahead, sorry. Have you guys have you guys ever experienced sequels like dream sequels? Absolutely, no. and Dude, they're the best if they're happens, a good dream. Man. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. It's like oh shit, it's a sequel to that other dream. Yep. You know dream I mean? part yeah, two. Yeah, and sometimes yeah. it really works. Like if you wake up from a dream and you're like, I want to go back, and you sleep and you yep. go back. To the island. Yeah. Yep. Oh, dude, yeah. definitely. Go back to the it's island, Kate. Kate, we gotta go back. Kate. We gotta yeah. go back. It's, it's like fuck me, man. It's yeah. Predator twenty. Like I've, I've had <laughs> yeah. oh, dude. That's when I would yeah. get up and walk around the house to try to work that dream out. <laughs> work that dream yeah. out. Oh. Definitely. What what were we even talking? I don't remember what we were talking about originally. But Dreams. oh, that was Jared. Yeah, yeah, he said, What game would you like to play uh, in in the book oh, yeah. or movie? Ready player one. Uh that would be Assassin's Creed two for me, probably. Oh, uh, like going through like because the the virtual tourism has always been my favorite aspect of Assassin's sure. Creed. Yeah. And like so going through like Renaissance uh, Firenze uh Firenze. Venezia. That was Ezio, right? That one? Yeah. 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 Uh and Venezia and um would 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 be amazing. Um can I also yeah. mention something a little off to the side? Whenever anybody asks me this question, I always think, man, most games don't have sex, but I believe Assassin's Creed 2 has sex. Do, don't you have like a liaison um, with a, a girl in kind of you have you a little it's you you do have a uh, liaison it, it, it is heavily implied it's that, heavily um, implied yet sex right yeah, he's like is, a ladies is, is a lothario uh, and um in um in brotherhood you start with uh katarina Zvot, katarina di Zvota, uh at your castle uh staying over in your bed there you go yeah we, we know we know what happened okay witcher three okay. There you go. Witcher 3. Except that's a pretty True. dark world, but you, you get to have some banging in there. Or Odyssey, you can even pick uh, I mean, w w Witcher 1, where you collect <laughs> all the na naked uh, cards with... with there, there you go. With if, that, if that's your for, kink. For that is not my scene. kink, though. Um, uh, oh, for every sex scene, you're yeah, all right. Game. Mega, oh, Mick, yeah, I gotta go <laughs> Mega Mick also uh, wanted to talk a little bit about... He doesn't want to oh, talk about it. One, he just yeah, wanted to see what we were cards. thinking for Discord. So Discord laid off 17 to 20 percent of their workers twitch laid off yeah, some twitch people as well yeah twitch yeah um it's going to continue man it's not just us it's not just gaming but gaming's getting hit pretty hard discords yeah. in oh, particular it's still the ramification it's still the reverberations of of covid absolutely yeah over hiring too um and it sucks yeah, it sucks sure. because w there's gonna be some uh brain drain you know some of the people yeah won't find news like because not a lot are hiring so the thing is, is if you do lose that, you go and you, you sort of miss out it's, on it's, the, the brains you know, the, that those people it's have. It's also just still so funny when they say, oh, we caught 33% of the workforce or whatever, but it's not going to impact anything. Oh, yeah. Do we yeah. see that all the time? <laughs> we would we would have to let somebody go yeah, and we'd be like, don't be worry. No dropping quality there would be no or anything yeah. at all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when that person was like the one who was linchpinning everything, and you're like, do not worry. Yeah. You know, it's it's almost like Leslie Nielsen and Naked Gun. Nothing to see yeah. here. And the yeah, fucking exactly. place is on fire and exploding <laughs> behind him. Nothing to see. Everything is as yeah. status quo. Um Sojourner says, did you guys have a funny, uh, uh, the funniest or most memorable or frustrating glitch you've encountered in a game? So that's all of them. So like funny, memorable or frustrating glitch. Any I mean, glitch? Sa save games are pretty fucking frustrating when you lose a save game. Yeah, but that's sort of like the, the, the atomic option on an answer. Yeah, um, yeah it's corrupt. Falling through the world. Blue screen. Yeah, dude. Man, that's one of the Those creep me out ones. too silver because like there's something about just the falling yeah without a bottom out of the blue <laughs> kind of stuff and sometimes like your in, stomach does in, that in, in in the witcher 3 where you would get spawned into underwater 
Like, and there would be Ooh. no surface. You would just be... or, or like Subnautica <laughs> when you can't see the bottom. I, I have this thing with like not seeing the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> the best one has to be the one from Black Flag, right? With like the god ship that I like knew spawns. I was drinking and trying <laughs> to mention that. That is yeah. the most amazing one because yeah, Abzi, be it one, looks man. like it's on purpose. Yeah, right, it's so amazing, man. It's, it's like so whoa, out of the water. I was yeah, also going to yeah. mention Unity. I never want to see a video again, but the people's faces having the geometry oh, mess yeah, up in Unity. Eyes. Holy oh, shit, and that is haunting. Eyes yeah, Dude, yeah. I didn't know about that black flag one. The black flag like one is so awesome. Cool. I'll send you a YouTube video where, like, he, he, he <laughs> pairing that with like music, like Ameno. You know, so like something. Very, yeah, the, like, the big like bombastic it's... classical music, yeah, and this so fucking good, boat man. comes out of the water, and it looks like it's from Pirates oh, of the Caribbean yeah. or something. Like it's raising yeah, yeah, like yeah. it's, it's an like undead black, ship. Uh, it is. Yeah, yeah Black Pearl. Yeah, black Pearl just coming down from under, and then the people falling from the sky into the ship. Dude, how, dude, how did how would <laughs> what? I don't what know. Code, That's like, what, what code what, causes what, that. <laughs> What happened, dude? It's almost like he's splitting and the ship is. Yeah, that's the thing is it's not just rising up. It's obviously running the physics on the ship underwater or something. Yeah. You know, go ahead, Silver. Sorry. The the funniest bug I can't remember is still from GTA 4, Mm -hmm. where there was a very particular spot on a like children's playground with a swing set where the Mm -hmm. physics were bugged Mm -hmm. so that when the swing started, if it hit you, it would like it catapult you. Catapult you, yes, to, man, to like into the stratosphere. That was <laughs> People awesome. People would like drive up cars and whatnot, and you could do this in GTA Online as well. Uh, the, like the buck was still there in GTA Online as well. Um, in in GTA Four is online uh, multiplayer. Um, but people would like line up cars and they would like record tons of extraordinarily funny YouTube videos of like just getting catapulted through the entire by the, the single map. tree set <laughs> or this, swing set from this like single yeah. swing. Yeah, <laughs> that was awesome. I did Children remember swing. seeing a bunch of that shit, and I found it by the way. You know, you see something like that that's repeatable, yeah, and you're like, we got to check it out and see if that actually happens. <laughs> um, some people are saying have weird ones in B Act Three and, and Baldur's Gate Three. Fallout had a lot of instances where enemies would get shot into space. That happened to me in Red Dead One. I was riding the fucking wagon and I got off and it shot like a it like a rocket. It wasn't like a it was on purpose, is what it looked like. And the you hear the horses go like and they're and they shot in the sky and just disappeared. I love that kind of stuff. It almost makes it. I'm not going to say fun, but it, don't, it makes it fun when you discover those occasionally, as long as they don't screw up your yeah. game. Um, Kulaban says, I had the stupid glitch every time I joined a friend's game in The Ascent, where literally all the menus would have their tutorials again every time I joined. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Every single time. I yeah. hated oh, that. Yeah. That's annoying. The best, yeah. though, is when Johnny was telling us about fucking Wasteland 3, and Wasteland, him and Reg went yeah. in, and that cutscene at the starting opened up, and you get that vile... That battery acid feeling in your mouth where yeah. you're like, oh, God, please don't let it yeah. do what I think it's doing. And it starts the entire game over. Oh, how many oh, did man. that happen twice to you, Johnny? Where that cutscene yeah. reloaded twice? Yeah, it happened twice. Yeah, um, yeah it wasn't just a cutscene. It fully reset our progress to before <laughs> everything we had done. It's just like nightmare. Nightmare. Did, did yeah, you beat that again? Twice? No. Did, oh, no. Yeah. Did they, and that's what stopped. I mean, legitimately yeah, is that sort I, of what burned you on you it? know i i think it's similar to to the jedi survivor problem mm-hmm. where your first experience for some people is so bad with it that you just never return right. yeah i watched silver play uh kingdom come and he went into a village and everybody was missing their fucking heads and that was yeah. haunting because I <laughs> I was like, what is going on? And every single character's head was just gone, like the headless horseman. We were like, what the shit? You had that up on your uh, YouTube for a while, didn't you? Yeah. In uh, your, yeah in it's your... still there. The video yeah, still your there. Let's Plays for that. Um, Ref says, what games do you think have the most visually appealing food? I mean, <laughs> I think. Oh, you know, 15? Final Fantasy 15? Final Fantasy 15? Yeah, Final with Fantasy 15. The recipes? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, those things. Uh, I mean, those made me hungry. <clears throat> they Dude, loved, I gotta they tell so you, good. Gaiden, Yakuza, uh, the, oh, like yeah, this Yakuza's one. have amazing. Oh, I'm things. getting hungry all the time, man, because yeah. I go into the restaurants and I take like two burgers and yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. yeah. all nice. the Yakuza's have been like that, though, right? 
I yeah, mean, where yeah, they've yeah, had yeah. like really good the noodles the, and, and stuff. The new engine. Yeah. Like Kiwami and, yeah, the uh, foods look great, man. Goddamn. Oh, God. <laughs> um, Beast by Nature asked something. What's your least favorite undesirable in-game effect, and why is it always motion blur? <laughs> well, that's true. Yeah, that uh, is true. Camera motion, motion blur. You know, sure. I, I, I don't mind it as much. I think some games look quite pleasing with it if it's well done. Yeah, but like for it, me, like per object motion blur. Oh, cro yeah, per object all the time. I, I find that one. Yeah, yeah chromatic is why. is rough. I don't know why games are like a lot of games are combining per object and camera now that when you turn oh, off yeah. camera you gotta. But like some games just keep object blur on because that's how it works. Like you can't have it not on. Um, uh, on on chromatic though, I actually think that might be the answer for me or vignette. Yeah. Some games will vignette. do a vignette, oh, yeah. and it sounds weird because it shouldn't be that bothersome, but it makes me think I'm running faster. Like where Skyrim yeah. would trick you into yeah. thinking you were running fast by yeah, because adjusting it's the FOV. With your periphery. Yeah. yeah, and I'll be yeah, like, yeah. why is this vignetting all of a sudden? You know, they just want to show something, but I, I, I don't find like vignette. I like squinting. I'm going right. like. Yeah, yeah. But all three of those are really terrible. They're all, they're all <laughs> good examples. I don't like, uh, I don't like uh, lens flare. I think, I don't like, I don't think games should mimic cameras. I think. They well, oh, when they do that, like we're in like a, a camera person, thing. But... Yeah. Especially as first person, like I'm, I'm looking through someone's eyes. I don't, I'm not looking right. through a camera. There's right. No, I agree one. with that for sure. What's yeah. the other one? There's like, there's like film grain, and there's, uh, there's another one, not lens flare, um, where the light kind of not bloom, where the light when it shines is that's just lens flare, right? Yeah, it's probably just. Lens it's flare. probably an artistic version flare. of lens of lens yeah. flare. Maybe you're talking about. Yeah. 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 Dude, it is so or funny. Like depth though. of field sometimes, like I don't, uh, and sometimes I do like depth of field, but other times it's like I have depth of field. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. No, I don't really are you mean. meaning? So what you're disliking is that a lot of games pretend you're in first person, but it's really first person camera. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, I don't like yeah. that. Yeah, no, I yeah. agree with a, a dude. Motion every single time depth of field, I turn to low or off every time yeah. i'm like because they make it look like you have the most narrow point of view <laughs> when you're talking to somebody you're like dude why is Sometimes, this person yeah. cut yeah. from the and background nobody's and like eyes work like right. a lens of that type like, yeah that it no... is so crazy enhanced where the entire background looks just like vaseline and blur and you're like come on dude there's yeah. a little bit more and, and that looks you're, great you're, for a you're picture nearsighted as if you'd been reading a book uninterrupted hey. for 30 years yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> What were you saying, Johnny? That Nobody has that. That what? stuff looks great for a picture. So when I go into photo mode, <laughs> I do want to dial it in sometimes like yeah. that. But when you're looking at a game world, that doesn't make sense that you'd be seeing it through that lens. And it, that, yeah, there is there is one exception I think, which is for um, for desert, like heat, where it can be. Oh, you a way see to the, sort uh, of, uh, where it can kind of be a way to, to to mimic the heat haze. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That you get in uh, in desert sometimes, um, but that's about it. Um, we had some questions on Reddit. Fighting D Dog says, "Did you see the Oblivion remaster tease? Oblivion remaster tease for the developer direct? I did not. Oh, interesting. Yeah, we talked interesting." Interesting. We did talk about the idea that all I care about Oblivion is that everybody doesn't look like they're wearing a rave fucking necklace light flashing on their face like the bloom in Oblivion. Yeah, like Remember that shit? Well. 800 yeah, miles yeah. away and the guy's like glow, yeah. his head's glowing. He's like, hello. <laughs> I, 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 as long as they fix that. Um, and then uh, Melon says, how do you guys balance gaming, work life and other hobbies? Furthermore, do you do any kind of scheduling for each category? Say, do you time off? Of, uh, do you do you block time off for gaming ever? Block time off? Yeah. Do you like I'm going to set aside two hours to play this game? Do you, do you find yourself doing that more often than not? No, no. I just play when I have free time. Yeah, I think my scheduling, be it just becomes organic, I don't make right? It like a job or like I don't make it like a. Like I don't make it like a thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Weirdly enough, I, I feel like it's the opposite. I carve time for the stuff. For that, other stuff. For yeah. the stuff that needs to happen. Like, okay, let's say, you know, do some exercise or, uh, you know, read. Like things I want to do, but I know they're not the easiest necessarily right. to step into. That I'm not going to do just because I want to sometimes. So I carve time for those. But then My stuff like gaming, that's just sort of organic. My game, yeah. my my schedule is definitely hardest, humanly hardest things first, always. 
if it's working out, that's, a good that, so, that's the, I get say, it out of the, the way. the frog? Like you, you, you do the hard thing first. I do the hard thing first, yeah. I want to roll out of bed, work out, do all the work that I have around the house, all that stuff, so that I can <laughs> choose games, reading a book, hanging out, talking in the right. Discord, what have you. Um, that is, I guess it is scheduling, because I do block out time for that. I definitely block out time yeah. for that. I, I, it's weird, though. It's before the work day. I block out prior to 8, mm -hmm. and then 8 is like 8 a.m. Sorry. It's like, okay, now I can do what I want uh, for the right. work day, which is play a game or do a video or something. Um, the, uh, the one thing I don't know about you guys, I've noticed is as people are getting more together physically, I haven't, I'm just going to be honest. I've caught myself a couple times feeling what would be the term, not conceit. Uh, I, I would feel a little angry that real life en encroached in what I wanted to do. There was a couple times where like, people are like, Hey, let's game physically. Let's do board games. I'm like, great. And I, in the time frame, it's late at night. I'm sitting back. I'm looser. I'm like, Oh yeah, man, that sounds great. And then Saturday comes around. I'm like, fuck. Yeah, and you're like, oh, yeah. I love yeah, it when yeah. I do it. I want to point out if That's Cadiz why I is watching commitments sometimes. Right. You know? Some, like, oh, I don't know yeah. how I'd feel. <laughs> yeah, we go, we're yeah. emotional in that way. Like sometimes your energy, oh. I, dude, I've been high, like late at night, just super high on energy, just like ready to do stuff, talking to everybody, being like, I'll make this plan, this plan. Then the next day you yeah. wake up and that plan's ahead of you and you're all, yeah. yeah. Okay. I usually enjoy yeah. it, you know, once I do it, but it definitely yeah. pops up. Mm -hmm. Uh, we all schedule out time for working out then or physical stuff, I would say, uh, or at least like have a plan. <laughs> we won't say we do it. We have um, a plan. Sometimes I, I tend to skew like I come back home from work. Let's say I come back at like five or six um, and then I wait for like traffic to die down. So usually around eight, nine p.m. But whenever like if I have something to do, like a podcast, I'll go earlier. And you, like so that. you work yeah. out at eight or, or nine p.m.? Yeah, 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 but I, I, I think I might change to six a.m. But I have to like commit to that. I have to start. I like, I like nighttime, but I have to start sleeping early to be able to do that. Does it keep you up working out late? No, no. Because I think for me, it would prob, I would probably be energized too much working out late. I always work out late, come back, eat half a chicken, and then <laughs> half a chicken. So you mean like breast, mm. thigh, leg, wing, breast, yeah. breast thigh, leg, yeah, wing? Yeah, like I yeah. literally cut a chicken yeah. in half. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, yeah, it's awesome because, like, if, if you know you're serving allotment, a chicken is a magical creature because not only is it not super bad for you, it's quadrant perfect. Like, yeah, there's yeah. almost no animal in the world that you can look at and go, I know exactly what part of that chicken I can eat right now. And it yeah. just, bloop, it's, it's like a video game where you're like, <laughs> and you've got your one heart or half of it's your whole yeah. life bar. You're like, click, yeah, art, yeah. or, rah, 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 and you shovel all it down. And you're like, dude, day's done. Yeah, I know yeah. that. Half a chicken is good, too. You get those things cooked up yeah. and easy food to eat. The next yeah. one from Reddit. Especially oh, rotisserie. Oh, dude. Rotisserie, yep. Rotisserie is great. Um, Go ahead. No. Like, I, I, I think I'm the odd man out here because I can't really schedule these days because of my health. So it's very in flux day to day what I can do and what I can't. So I kind of have to, to, to go by play it by ear. Yeah, play yeah. by ear. What what does it feel like? I can actually get done today, and then try the the days I can actually do stuff. Try and get as much jammed in as possible, and then the days I can't do a whole lot of stuff. Um, obviously, <laughs> I'm not going to do a lot of stuff. So I I don't have specific time set off for for gaming or or anything. Um, I just try and make do uh, and try and adapt as. Pr on a day-to-day -day basis i do try like the one thing i consistently do try to do these days is to keep a somewhat consistent like day day-to-day -day rhythm of of either being in bed or sleeping at yeah. night and then being up and about for during sure the day, yeah uh so that i can actually like socialize and see people and, and whatnot um but but that can be challenging as well um and that i don't always manage manage to do that but that is pretty much the extent of the scheduling I'm able to do. I should mention one thing I do, moment. and I schedule 100%, 100% every night, is I end every night with one or two comedy shows, so I always go to bed happy. Right. Like, it is religious now, and if I don't, and we missed it a couple days ago, I woke up and I was like, hmm. Not that I was unhappy, but I could tell because I love going to bed giggling. Like you go to bed, you're watching a stupid show and you're like, dude, this is so dumb. And then you go to your entire mood is different. I have better dreams if I if I remember them and I wake up and um, 
it doesn't change the wake up time, but it changes the funk you sometimes have. Like we've done mm -hmm. it. I've been in chat late at night, talked about, you know, business or something. And, you know, it's like some stuff will get me heated. And a couple days ago, I was really mad during a conversation that we all had about industry stuff. And I went to bed and the next morning I woke up and I was like, yeah, that wasn't probably the best. I should have watched some Brooklyn Nine-Nine, you know, just like a 45 <laughs> minute, like little where people are even laughing, even a laugh track in Friends where you're like, you know, you sort of right, get yeah, that, that go, positivity I go on before I sleep and bad Reddit or like sleep. hold my Cosmo hilarious Reddit. Cause like that, <sighs> it depends. Cause like I, I just go on my homepage and I have like hold my feeding tube followed. I have like, uh, I have a couple things that are, you know, those fight, can be funny have, and dark fight porn, fight porn, you know, oh, gotcha. I have a lot yeah. of those. So sometimes it like, Oh my God, I remember like a horrid one where people were but don't, like, you don't have to explain what ice. Yeah, I'm just oh, saying no, no. Don't. It was just okay. someone hit his head hard and, and yeah, right. Right. I don't like to see using, that, especially yeah, at night. Know, same. Um, yeah. um Next up, we got a question. Last one in Reddit, we got uh, pick a game you love and state which things are not really good in it. So what's a game you love where there's one, like, a thing that you absolutely do not like? Um, let's say Elden Ring. I don't mm, like. Elden Ring, interesting. Um, I do not like... Damn, I love that game. I don't like the 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 the, the, the duo, bitch. No, oh oh, I have I have one. I don't like the programmed in behavior of uh, bosses that when you like take a healing pot, like a yeah. flask, right away they they they're programmed to like hit you with like a ranged attack. Right, right. Yeah. Is, that's when I yeah. Um, let's see. Um, what's a game that I even love? Uh. Shit. See, this that is that made the... me think of input reading too. Like some games have that it, input like reading, Neo that's the one. and other games where the enemy reacts instantly. Oh, like, yeah. Let's yeah. say Your you input. pressed attack, and the enemy instantly reacts to that in like an unbeatable way, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, that's a good one. Do you have any silver? Yeah, I have a bunch. I mean, one of the things I, I've complained about a lot over the years is um different rules for for ai versus you uh, versus you let them run out of ammo dude <laughs> with, why with don't like, they ever run it, yeah i mean in particular in a game like for all it's it's plot it's and whatnot like the last of us where when you're playing on like grounded or whatever where the lack of resources and, and ammo just feels completely absurd like no enemy this, this enemy was just shooting like 12 15 rounds now now there's nothing from any any of these like twelve guys, nothing to scrounge. Oh well, right, um, yeah. Like it, it's yeah, it 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 starts to feel really gratuitous, um, in a way that kind of disconnects you from the game. I'll I'll talk about one of a game I liked here recently, which was Assassin's Creed. Or sorry, I just there we go, Prince of Persia. <laughs> Prince of Persia, they have enemies that when you get ready to jump across a long gap, you can hear the arrow being pulled back and they're going to shoot you at the apex of the jump and until you kill them. You have to kill them a different way. So you'll jump and you'll hear, and you'll be like, fuck, and it'll, be, and it'll hit you perfectly. And you can't see them, like but they automatically Euclidean know where. Yeah, geometry yeah to get dude, these like... guys are, you know, they're doing shit on an abacus. They've got everything worked out yeah, and yeah. they can see you across 10 levels, but you can't you know, for some reason, see them because they're not perfectly on your screen at the time. And yeah. a lot of the games I like have that, actually. I mean, it definitely pops up more often than not, and I absolutely despise that kind of stuff. Johnny, you want to talk about Grand Blue Fantasy PS demo out. So this is the JRPG, right? <laughs> yeah, this is very like... weeb, dude. It looks so weeb. It, it, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I was, I was watching some of the previews and stuff. And at first, I thought it, it was going to be something I would like to play, but I kind of feel like it's like a Tales of Arise. Oh, gotcha. Uh, you know. Maybe a lot of grind? Not just a grind, because I think that could be fun if you really like the gameplay, but I got the feeling that they have these, I don't want to call them bootleg cutscenes, but that's sort of what it feels like. It's like they're not full on like story cutscenes. They are, you know, all in engine. People aren't moving, aren't doing things. The right. cutscene is like, you know, um, so the, yeah, I, I, 
I kind of did a 180 on it. I was pretty interested at first. I thought it could be a, a fun, like, Xenoblade type game, but um, I've kind of done a, a 180 on it. Uh, but I wanted to mention, yeah, there's a demo on P PS5 and PS4, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. If people want to try it out, I might check it. But, yeah, it, it seems a bit too... The best thing is like, that there's a demo at least, right? You know, so at least you have the ability yeah. if you want to check it out to see, you know, what they show. Prince of Persia has one too. Demos should just be is a it, thing. Is it uh, for EA members only, the demo for Prince of Persia? You mean Ubisoft? Ubisoft. Oh, it's Ubisoft. It's yeah, Ubisoft, course, yeah. Not yeah. EA. And, uh, um, I, you know, I don't know. The guys in the chat were playing it. I think I, it was I Ubisoft. I would assume only. so because yeah. you have to go into the launcher to. To play but, the game. But you don't have to, like, be a, a subscriber. Oh, or oh that's a plus. good question. Oh, no. uh, do you? I, I, I don't think so. I, I wouldn't think so. Not for the demo. Okay. That's, that's a good cool. question. Is Prince but, of Persia... But, uh, I'm not uh, absolutely sure. Demo. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily not put it past you, but I, I would be surprised. You play. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think demos are great. I, I personally understand pretty quickly if i'm gonna like the it gameplay. says just it says it looks like just an account maybe right they require yeah. ubisoft connect yeah so you you gotta yeah. log in right yeah. yeah okay not bad that's good yeah that's good I can, I can live with that as long as you're not you don't have that thing where it's like that's sort of what abzi and i were asked in the last podcast about paying for console online because we've become mm -hmm. so accustomed to it but then yeah. when you look at it, you're like Steam or what have you. You're already paying for your internet, and you just, you know, log into whatever game, yeah. and you play it. And on the consoles, you know, for most of the games, not every one, there are a couple that are purposely set up so that you don't have to. But, um, yeah. And then uh, I got a question just popped up. Snarl says, during your first preview, Expedition's a Mudrunner game. There's no mention of wheel support. This was a huge issue with SnowRunner and Mudrunner. How did you play, and was there any mention of wheel support that the game will offer from them? There isn't, uh, as far as I know, at least. I played on uh, GamePad. I do not, weirdly enough, on SnowRunner and Mudrunner and some arcade games, I don't like the wheels in them. And I end up handle... playing GamePad. Sorry. doesn't have a lot of like extra stuff other than driving. Like You have to control... Correct. Things well, that's like what your, I was going to add. Yeah, there's a lot of aiming for like the rope, gr the grapples and all that kind of stuff. So I don't know how that would translate. I, I'm not saying it won't. I'm just Plus saying like a hybrid. You do like a it is wide. very much a hybrid. You do a lot of um, non wheel stuff, or, I guess. Or like nice. menu stuff too. Kind of like menu stuff. I'm pretty menu. good because, you know, Forza, you know, the, you, you, paddles and they stuff. Figured but it out. A, a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Sorry, Silver. What were you going to say, bud? Just uh, that's also a large reason why I don't play a truck simulator with a wheel because I have to be able to orient myself in the cabin, right? Look from side to side and, and like mm. the, uh, check tra traffic and whatnot, um, which is much more difficult to do with, with a wheel hooked up. Yeah, I will definitely time. check it for review. But yeah, for that one, I didn't. There, it, it, both of those. Uh, Pacific Drive also. I mean, unless they're allowing instant support where you have your wheel, then you grab your gamepad. Can you imagine trying yeah. to walk around and, you know, like the puzzles? There's a ton of puzzles in that game. I think some games just... The wheel is a very awesome, very genre-specific, very niche input. Yeah. And these games are not only that now. You know, there there are a ton of things, and you're doing you're you're crafting and constructing in some of these games, so it can be a little difficult. I what I don't like is when a game does feel like that, but then they don't allow for instant controller shift, like or you get the pause where you try to switch over controllers and everything yeah. freezes for a second. You're like, seriously? Because some games do it fine. Some games you'll be playing mouse and keyboard, and I'll bump the gamepad, and the entire screen will move, and I'll be like, oh, that's odd. That's you know, they're like. On you could almost do half and half if you wanted. Use like the yeah, gamepad in your mouth. Yeah, I did that for Cyberpunk, where oh, did you? all my driving was gamepad, mm -hmm. and then I would once the I got out of you the car, out, you I just would basically went to... mouse and keyboard. Yeah, and it, it worked great. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's I, what I, I did for Grand Theft Auto. Uh, for yeah, there you go. Oh, Grand Theft Auto, you used a wheel? Or no? no sorry, uh, game, I apologize. Game gamepad for yeah. driving and mm -hmm. uh, mouse and keyboard for um, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And and aiming and shooting. On, um, on PC. Some other stuff I wanted to talk about here. Well, I'll answer Game Dev's qu or De Dev Guy's question first. What musical album for you is perfect from beginning to end? Uh, Creedence Clearwater Revival Chronicle. 
Wow. That was a fast answer. That was the fastest yeah, answer Silver's ever given for perfect. any question ever. All right. So you like that first song to the last song? Freedom's Clearwater yeah. Revival. All right. Every single song on it is a banger. Every single song. Uh, man. From Susie Q through to Fortunate Son. Um, man, I'm trying to think if there's a... I buy a lot of stuff on SoundCloud, which are separate MP3s. And then once I get them in my library, I don't think of them as a disc anymore. So mm -hmm. I would say Dance with the Dead's last album was probably start to finish listenable without a skip. You know, like where you... Your yeah. brain doesn't even think about skipping. You're just fine, 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 done. So, yeah, I would say that. Do you have any, Abzi? Like, EDM seems like no. it'd be easier, right? Or like, you know, like electric music, maybe? No, no most of my uh, so, uh, most of the songs that I listen to, they, like, record labels have them in band camps um, as, like, vinyls, but, like, they have them digitally in band camps, and usually they have, like, a mixture of a lot of different artists and stuff. Sometimes it's one artist, but it's, like, eight songs. I don't think there's like an album I would say like I I like every single song of no. Yeah, because I buy I also I love Sound Camp or so, Sound Camp Band Camp and <laughs> Band SoundCloud Camp, yeah. because you can usually go and pick listen pre you know whatever and go oh you know not yeah. a fan of this starting whatever buy so I'll buy these yeah, yeah 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 I I hope I don't know the skew by the way at all I hope they get paid well I I, I think at least one of those doesn't pay their artists well right. Is it Bain Camp? I, that, I, that, so that I'm it... opening an account there for a label. Um, I think it's it's very minimal. It's it's not that bad, and uh, it's it, it's very generous. It's kind of like a, an unreal thing where like they only take stuff after. This is Bain Camp you're talking money, about. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. maybe it's SoundCloud that isn't great. I know one of or them. Like a, uh, or no, no, no. It's very cheap. It's like a twenty dollar thing, like a twenty dollar a month thing. And but I mean, what about flat. the artist? What when I what I'm saying is, if I buy one MP3, do they get paid? A super small amount versus if I hit buy mm, album. It uh, depends on the record label. Oh, okay. Pretty sure. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have a few. I like listening to albums. So I'll take like an album and listen to that sometimes instead of just pick, you know, picking and choosing tracks in mm -hmm. a playlist. I do, I do that too. But I, sometimes I do like to say, okay, I'm on this vibe. I'm going to just go through this album. I have a few like, um red hot chili peppers californication that was one i always liked and i would listen to like back to back avenged sevenfold has one i really like with hail um, to the king on it uh no the one prior to that prior the one to that. called avenged sevenfold yeah it's yeah. like the same name um uh, those are all bangers so i i brought up the agreement here um label accounts cost 20 dollars a month for up to 15 artists that's all they don't take a, like the other money that comes in so just twenty dollars a month flat for fifteen artists, or fifty dollars a month for unlimited artists. So, so what I'm saying is, if I buy somebody's, uh, if I buy an MP3 for just one MP3 for three dollars from uh, from Dance with the Dead, do they get three bucks, or is it like Steam where st do they see. take a? Let that me was... see uh, the breakdown. While you're looking that up, one. I wanted to ask Johnny. So, dude, for me, it's um, uh, Black Album. Metallica, I can usually leave oh, that yeah, on. That's a really good one. Yeah, there's a yeah. couple Def Leppard albums I can leave on. It, a lot of it is the older rock and roll where I'll just leave it on and I've become accustomed to the songs and they don't um right. they don't they don't push me away. Uh Disturbed has a couple albums that I'm very close to listening to all of it. But I would also agree that there's something awesome sometimes about listening to one album because they made it at that time. And so all the yeah. songs usually have a not a theme, unless it's Queensryche, but they yeah, all there, have a... there's like an established mood or Exactly. Vibe, there, yeah, right? over that thing. Even if it's just, oh, they went country in this album. You know, whatever. It's yeah. like, if you like right. that, it's like, that's the that thing. That was their headspace. That, yeah, that was their headspace. In a and way. Yeah. It feels good when you find that one where you're like, oh, dude, this is for me. This is like, Megadeth has one or two that I I really like almost every song so, and just sitting back. For digital items, Bandcamp's fee is 15%. The rate drops to 10% as soon as you reach $5,000 in uh, sales. Oh, okay. That's not bad. That, yeah. That's not a, I mean, it's not perfect. It's not 100%, but that's that's a better take than I think in my brain I had heard mentally. Mm -hmm. um, so that's not bad. Because I do buy, I have a tendency, there's some bands I buy every, like if they release an album, wherever they are, boom, I hit it all. And then some others I, I just sort of pick and choose. But yeah, that's interesting, man. Uh, I mean, dude, I just don't even think in albums anymore. I don't even know when a new yeah, album yeah, comes out, yeah. right? Like, I'll go to YouTube, and 
it'll pop yeah. up in premiere that there's a new and, song and from on purpose a lot of artists don't do full albums anymore yeah. they do like eps or singles. for your post malone and release oh, 40 fucking songs in one day or whatever on what Fridays, saying? Pancamp doesn't all proceeds oh, go yeah. to artists and labels on yes, Fridays. That's true. They that's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah, everybody cool. should just buy on Friday. <laughs> like um, I don't yeah. want them to go out of business. You know, they need to they they have some overhead, but um Cam says very hard question. Wu Tang reunited, Lincoln Park second album comes the closest. Oh, very oh, he's answering. Okay. Wu <laughs> Wu Tang reunited. I thought he was asking us if Lincoln Park was the a band right. Blink one eighty two. Blink one eighty two. Dude, I don't even know. I don't even know I mean, a song that, Blink. That, one. That's a classic. That was like my teenage years. Tell me a song from Blink. Blink 180. I don't even remember. Blink uh, 182. I Miss You. A uh, rock show. Uh, all the small things. All the small things. Okay. Okay. That's, what, that's yeah. what she said. That took man. me a while. That's what she said. All the small things. That's <laughs> what Game Dev says all the time. In fact, he will know, he will know that joke. Um... <laughs> I do the same thing with artists uh, who write. Like I'll I'll follow them for a while and then go on YouTube and they'll be like, oh, I, you know, read the new blah blah blah. I'll be like, Jesus, I didn't even know, you know. And then you go back and they've got ten novels and you're like, oh shit. Oh yeah. I still try to grab them, but I, my reading has been it's still very good. I still read a lot, but it's nowhere near what it used to be. Wish I could jump back in, like mm. jump back into so I really I miss reading as much as I used to. Man, when you're a like, young kid. Are we talking physical, Kindle? Uh, for what, sure, physical. For sure, physical. physical. Yeah, the smell of a book. There's something, man. right? About mm. the I mean, book. Li li lying in bed with a flashlight. Um, Absolutely, man. Or, yeah. Yeah. Or, or, dude, I when I was a kid, my mom and dad lights out, right? You know, you're a kid and you're like, yeah. I'm going to stay up to four. I would crack yeah. the door open if my mom and dad were a awake and I would use the light for my dad's TV and I would like aim my book so I could read. You know, using their and with the my lights off. Angle. Yeah, my dad be like, like "Shut your door! I know what you're doing." God damn it! Yeah, I've read by <laughs> moonlight before when I really liked a book. Sit at the window. Well, I had one window, and it luckily would get moonlight most of the time, and I'd be like sitting there, like, eh. love those, uh, love those times, man. I wish they were. It's harder to get in. I mean, it's harder to set time aside. I think. I mean, those you know? those were times when I would go to the library like once a month and just have a huge either like bag or or something just loaded with like pounds and pounds of books and then take it back home read through them all comics graphic novels as well um read through them all come back the next month the dewey decimal system the code of the then, nerd yeah. man the code of the nerd yeah dude i love that kind of stuff it was great today's parents would kill to get their children to read rather than be on the phone oh yeah for sure i'm glad i don't have a kid because I like I would be like, why aren't you reading? They're playing fucking snood or something, and I'm just like, you're wasting your life. I don't think I'd be a very good parent. I would want them to do all the things I did, you know, the analog stuff. And some of it, there isn't even a, what do you call it? A, there isn't even a digital version of some of the stuff I did when I was a kid. Man, and I have a feel. I have a feel like the issue as well is that let's say you want to raise your kids without like giving them iPads and stuff all the time. There's like the whole threat of other kids in school, right? Or if you yeah. want to raise your kid to be healthy and not eat candy, but it's like, oh, but all my friends are eating candy. So it's like you're kind of fucked. Dude, Abzi, I know a guy kids. who was making two or three hundred dollars a day by going to the store because he, he was one of the first ones to have a car and he was held back yeah. a year. So he was older than everybody by one year and he would buy Snickers and sell them for two bucks. He bought them for 55 cents. So he was just making a steal at school. He would take, he would come back Smart. and he'd be like, dude, "Oh, dude, he was a, yeah. he knew yeah. his shit." We the dude probably drugs. runs Microsoft now. Well, yeah, yeah. maybe not drugs. We, <laughs> we don't want to go there, but no, because you're a kid, you come out of break and somebody's selling a Snickers, you know, and you don't yeah. want to get, you know, bum a ride to the store with a friend. You're like, "All right, two bucks sounds fair." It's not fair at all. <laughs> it was, that was straight up grifting everybody, but it was a good yeah, time. Yeah. Um. What else do we got for game stuff, man? This has been like sort of a weird week. It's, I don't want to, I mean, I'm not saying we focused on negative, but um, is there anything like supremely, is there any new stuff that's been announced or any new tech? CES showed a transparent OLED. Did you fuckers see that thing? A no, transparent TV. No. So listen to this. It looks like, just like an aquarium, a thin aquarium, Okay. right? And they even have screensavers that mimic that. And then it has a sheet, like a projector almost, or a, screen that goes up behind it when you want to watch tv but it's a transparent tv and i was joking with the guys in chat going i use my tv to hide the wires i use my tv to hide the holes in the wall that i've hammered in years ago i don't want people to see through that goddamn thing I it would be useless for me but like a transparent tv it's not something i don't i don't think any of us ever thought 
That's what we need. That's no. the future. Yeah. Right? I want a transparent TV. I want a transparent yeah. TV. It's like, no, I want the TV to be brighter yeah. or better. Not, you know. Hologram or something. Yeah. Oh, dude. Holographic <laughs> TVs, man. They got to be. They got to yeah. be coming. Where it's that's what I thought in like 2020 or back in the day I was like oh you're gonna have a watch augmented and reality something and then out of yeah it, it's right not even like without wearing anything just like, like a, a pit boy you thing. know where yeah it shoots yeah, yeah, a hologram yeah. up and you're like oh yeah let's yeah. let's hope it doesn't look yeah, like yeah. Star Wars holograms but dude the idea <laughs> of of the bowl in the center of like your table or whatever that does the hologram of you know a movie you're watching where yeah. because yeah that kind of stuff is what I thought we would be at. You know. Wasn't there like a Windows Surface shit where there's like a big table where it's like a like a whole touchscreen thing? Probably, Wasn't but that gonna happen. It, it might have, but you know how it goes. The only right? one using it was like Dead Mouse when he utilized it. Exactly. For like the stuff. only one using it is like somebody <laughs> yeah, doing yeah. a big event. And they're like, "Hey, this fits yeah. my one specific niche that no one yeah. else, you know, fills." The other thing I've seen is um, I'm really happy to see uh, sound bars, like augmenting to the point to where now i i like separated speakers but i'm seeing a lot of people getting sound bars really good sound out of them we used to sell a bunch i like their sound but they were never you know it's difficult to separate something like that but i've, I've noticed yeah. a lot of sound bars so if somebody has an apartment it's easier for them to get some good sound in there in yeah, their I homes remember when those those things first started coming out and i was like what the hell like one speaker that could replicate yeah and, and you were all and and them. and, and you know, even back then, some of them sounded okay, but now the yeah. advances in, like, you know, some of the... I don't mean the 3D sound, by the way. I'm not talking about digital mm. effects. I'm talking about they've got better at building them, figuring out how to bounce sound around and stuff. It's all very cool, cool shit. And there was, like, this thing where you, you'd you have, like... I remember one, either... A, I think it's a sound bar. No, no, it was, like, a full-on surround system, but you'd have, like, a thing that you'd keep in your pocket or, like, you'd have it on you. And it would make it so that wherever you're sitting in the room, it'll it'll triangulate to your position. So like oh. wherever you are in the room, it'll be like, you know, those speakers would act as the ones that are behind you and stuff. Did you like see the TV as around. well that they announced at the CES that tracks your eyes does 3D because it's tracking your eyes and it can do a 3D display of any oh, sure, any 2D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's What's cool. the best like theatrical experience you guys have ever had? Ooh, Ooh, you mean like the best theater, movie, sound, everything combined? Oh, I really loved Oppenheimer, yeah. man. Oppenheimer. Really? Was Oppenheimer. Special. That's Nolan, though. He mixed it, right? Yeah, he mixed it well this time. No shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, he mixed it well. And what was the, what was the, uh, was it the, because I thought that one personally, I thought it was somewhat not slow or whatever, but what was it that it got you? Was it the explosion? That's what I was going to well, say. There was yeah there was the one obviously the big scene where they tested it for the first mm -hmm. time and it was like super quiet in the theater and then it, boom, boom. You know, it was insane and then there was like the really cool imagery shit that i liked uh, mm -hmm. with the sound he played around with sound really well to to kind of express the uh, oppenheimer's like anxiety about stuff and right. like, dilemmas and shit sort Which of his just, thought process or how really he saw the world kind of stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, you did IMAX on. You saw that three times, right? Isn't that the movie you just yeah, told yeah. me you saw three, three times? times in theaters? Jesus yeah, yeah. Christ, that's a long movie too. It's not. It's not a. Was yeah. that the three, yeah. three, three, three hours, hour tour almost? Yeah. Damn, Interstellar. Yeah. Somebody said Interstellar. What about you, uh, yeah. Silver? What's your favorite? Like you know, I I'm a child of 1981, so I never had a chance to watch Star Wars in theaters originally. I always watched it on television back mm -hmm. in the day, in the 80s and 90s, growing up. So uh, when Lucas it reissued the special editions in '97, that was my first chance to actually go into a go to a theater uh, and and watch Star Wars. And, yeah. Uh, the theater I saw it in was the biggest. We have the here in Denmark. We have what certainly at the time was the biggest um, movie theater in Northern Europe, <laughs> um, where I watched it and just like. The intro sequence to that movie where the Star Destroyer comes in. Right. Yeah. Um, after the opening crawl and the entire movie theater is just like shaking. <laughs> yeah. From from the vibrations of that. And you really get like the sense of the the might of an awe of like the of the Galactic Empire. Yep. Uh, yep. And that and that and that weapon. Um like watching a new hope in ninety seven probably in that theater was probably that for me. Also, I don't know if you are like me, but whenever somebody turns a lightsaber on, I care how it sounds when it activates. And I'm a nerd. Oh, yeah. And of course. 
And so I didn't like the new movies, but Kylo Ren sounded like a V8. You know, it was like, and I, I sort of dug that. But I remember in the first movie when, like, Luke turns that lightsaber on and it's just, and I, yeah, just oh. the hum. Yeah, dude, there's something yeah. about that activation sound that gets me. But, dude, that's why uh, audio is lost. If, if you're not listening to, I'm not saying you have to be perfect on your audio system. I mean, but, Ben Burt, arguably best sound, sound designer in. Of all time, probably. History, yeah. But w when you were talking about the might of the Empire, you miss that if you don't have some base, right? You miss the oh, entire, sure. you miss yeah. the idea of this ship. And remember, even Spaceballs teased it, it just flies by forever, right? And you're just like, yeah. how big is this fucking ship? <laughs> it is so good. that uh, yeah. Star Wars definitely nails it. Do you have any, Johnny? Yeah, I, I still remember when I saw Interstellar in the IMAX. So here in, the, in London, we have the biggest screen in Europe. Uh, or at least they claim, and that's where I saw it. And they they had an amazing, uh, like the way the seats are, they were extremely vertical. It's almost like everybody is on a like stadium on a almost plane. On a, yeah, like straight yeah, like down. Very, yeah, at, almost at the same distance to the screen because all the seats are like slanted mm -hmm. and very vertical. Um, so so that's really cool. And the sound was inc is incredible in that room, like because they have like a perfect sound system um, yeah i don't know it was incredible and you know i love it's one of my favorite ever movies i love space Damn. I love like, when, when, so when you much. see the you know the black hole that's like a 3d sphere and that type of stuff that that i think it is my favorite like, movie interstellar me. yeah um, yeah, I think so. I was going to say to yeah, bring back something so that good. Silver said that blew me away the first time was I was at home and we, my dad had bought a baby system. It wasn't, it was, and it was piecemealed, but THX would come up and it would be that. And you're right to the point. The THX uh, symbol would come up to show you the THX sound. And it would get right yeah, to the point of your ears, thing. almost yeah. fucking coming out of your head. And you'd be like, whoa. And yeah. then it would, and then it'd be like, and it would dive off. Yeah. And I remember just, and I got like, I would, I'm getting chills talking about it. I would get chills when THX came on and just be like, what the fuck? We know yeah. this is going to be good. <laughs> you know, like a little kid just, this is going to be the greatest thing in the world. Yeah, man, that shit was when, awesome. Like, every movie had like the Paramount thing. Like yeah, the, the, you're at the starting, like trying to do the, yeah, the logos. Or like spun, the 20 year that, thing. The 20 yeah, they year did thing the 20 year anniversary. They, the, the lion yeah. roar. The uh, for, the one company, the raw, oh, the lion that they used to yeah. use. GM, 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 dude. Metro, that, Metro every, Goldwyn Stargate. Mayer. Yeah. yeah. Watching Stargate SG One every every episode. And you have that like, line. Yes. You're like, "There's real lions. I'm fucking gonna be killed." <laughs> it's do you, Sorry. Do you remember so. um, character? One of my favorite opening gags of a video game was for a Curse of Monkey Island, where because they were obviously tied to Lucas Arts, um, yeah, Lucas Film, so they had. I already know THX what you're gonna say. Rights, but but they <laughs> had <laughs> THX like the opening. And, and it was uh, the monkeys. It was screaming, yeah, screaming monkeys. And <laughs> that it was awesome. The, with the tagline, the monkeys are listening. Yeah. Yes, that was amazing. And they chirp louder and louder. They're like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. oh, dude, that it, was a it was great basically rip off. The, the THX, yeah. just with monkeys screaming. Yeah. That was great, man. I forgot all about that. And I think in my head, I was even thinking that like there was some, uh, there was something in the original TH logo that was like monkeys. But I think I was thinking about that game as well. But yeah. yeah, dude, that was all those opening scrolls when they mattered, when they hit hard, was just so great. HBO had a cool one that was this, it was one of the first digital animations ever. And it was a liquid metal that would spell HBO. And I remember as a little kid, oh. it would be like H, and then I, there was a slash and the B-O would come in. B -O, but it would be like HBO, and I remember just being like, oh, fuck, this, this means quality. Back when, you know, we yeah. thought there was quality there. With yeah. games... With games, has there been an oh, so for me, Wolf Team, which did uh, Time Gal and um, and uh, Cobra Command and Dragon's Lair, they would go, they would have a drop of liquid. It'd go like blue, blue, Wolf Team. Do you guys have like a uh -huh. favorite intro Frick. for a company? Valve had the 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 guy with the valve. Oh, out with of the his valve head. in his head. Yeah. yeah oh gosh, man, that yeah. was good. Yeah. I forgot all about the I, valve I in the head. I remember I don't know like why. in the PlayStation. I think it was the playstation one or two when you booted up any game it would do like the that the, there was a sony uh, yeah, yeah thing 
uh, that and I it's like 50 50 chance if the game works or not and you're like <laughs> if there's like a slight difference in like the logo yeah, so oh, like, like, oh the you knew gonna that the now. game was oh, not like, gonna yeah, play yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, disc, animation. the disc had a blemish or something and then like it stopped sonic did yeah, sega yeah. and and i remember getting oh, yeah, uh, sonic sega. and it and i heard voices and to me it was such a big deal to hear voice it was obviously mm. fake right it was like remember midi it. Go ahead. EA Games challenge everything. Yeah, or Remember it's in the one? game, right? It was it's EA Sports, game. it's Sports, in the game. Yeah. Oh, dude, it's those were game. good. Back when, like, there was a little bit of quality left over. I mean, LucasArts used to do kind of an individual gag for their um, logo for every single game. Almost had, like, an individual game where the, like, guy with the Halo or whatever would come in uh, differently. The stick figure to, character was he a stick yeah, figure and he had the, yeah 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 kind of yeah with the with a some some kind of halo or something um above his head um uh, and he would come in differently like in some kind of funny way or something um in unique ways for for each title almost indio brings up something important he said he liked the hbo intro that swooped through town and then turned into all of these colorful lines that is how or one of the ways they got the game of thrones intro actually too they had seen mm -hmm. that, and they sort of subconsciously copied some of that. I love that HBO. HBO had great ones, man. The yeah. the er, the early ones. When it comes to like stuff for games, though, what's the best? Is there a best moment in audio for games where something's popped up? Oh, for sure. What like uh, what's one? I, I think I've I think I've mentioned it before, but Silent Hunter Three was like a definitive audio for, in, inside the sub, hearing the pings and stuff. You mean like just the yeah. atmosphere? Yeah, not just not just the pings, but also when you like hit a ship and it starts to sink and you can hear like you're underwater and you can hear the metal screaming through the water as it's like ripping apart and as the ship is like mm -hmm. and then you hear the sound of the ship like sinking to the mm -hmm. ground. And there's That's this awesome. colossal weight of what's actually happening that that you, that you get through through this audio scale. Through just the audio uh, it's, itself. It's amazing. No, and not only that, but also like you have to navigate using audio with the hydrophone where you're listening for like little propellers in the water, like miles and miles and miles away or, or whatever. And you have to shift through all these other sounds to sort of try and identify it. Um, that was just an amazing game from an audio perspective and several other perspectives as well. I'm going to cheat real quick. And I want to mention one other movie sound gag that forever I need repeated if they ever use this character in anything. But first time I heard somebody hit Captain America's shield and you hear that boom. And oh, now yeah. it's and right. in video games, if it's not done, if you don't hear that hollow reverb, like the, yeah, the uh, resonance, yes, the thing. resonance, it will. It, and I was just listening to somebody play. I think it's PS2. There's a Captain America game he was playing and it repeated it. And I was like, mm -hmm. yeah. there's something about it that that first time That's you good. hear it, you're like, oh, yeah, that is good. Or heat for movies, heat and the guns in heat. The first time you watch that movie and you find you, you realize this sounds like no other movie and then you realize it's because it's real guns there was no you know they decided to not fake guns on top of heat and those guns going off is just it's a cacophony your brain's like what the shit yeah. do you guys have any other game ones i think the classic like final fantasy victory fair just burned because like in forever burned in you know they say repetition legitimizes and that i think that for me is for sure the the stuff that i just like you say i've had it burnt in yeah and it it also reminds me of outros for uh for shows especially comedy shows like brooklyn 99 oh, at the end of yes. every single episode you hear like fermi lawn yeah and, and it's, it's ron swanson it's, uh, it's ron swanson yeah yeah uh, I didn't so know that. that. That's burned into my brain. It's that's part of my Fremulon. Like, dopamine. It's like for, yeah, for, one of for my sure. favorite favorite sounds is uh, from Lost. It's the smoke. The, uh, oh, the man in black. Mm. The smoke ah, monster. Dude, the good, smoke monster. The smoke monster. Has such an and you'd hear it clicking it has, like, at the first. Scream, and then mm -hmm. it has like the steampunk. Tick, 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 oh, very tick, much. Like, a like a, yeah, like some so kind of good, train man. is going on. That was uh, they yeah. did really good. I also liked the starting of Lost. They would open, they would do their thing, and then they would just be like lost, and it, yeah. it would yeah. sort of fade yeah, yeah. out. That you or were like talking at the end as well. And you were talking about the lack yeah. of sound uh, mattering in Oppenheimer. I do love that when you know something's going to happen and everything yeah. dies in a movie or a game, and you're like almost you're too like, quiet. 
<laughs> yeah, and yeah. then or, or like, or like a, uh, uh, a movie like No Country for Old Men where there's no music at all. Yeah, there's no music at all. It's all, oh, all just all just that. the That's sounds funny. and yeah. Um, I would also say I remember Terminator, Terminator Two, when. Mm -hmm. Like when it starts up, it's not the music's awesome in Terminator 2, but some of the like when they show her holding onto the chain, the chain link fence, and she's having a dream of the end of the world. And nuke sounds frighten me for some. I mean, I, they should frighten anybody, yeah, but when a yeah. nuke is done well in a movie, that monstrous, yeah, like, this, and the alarm, yeah, yeah, there's just something Dooms about it that alarm. works so. Oh, yeah, any of the doomsday yeah. alarm sounds. Um, Halo's overshield, yeah, Kulaban, dude, the. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago, I think, and that that's one of my favorite game uh, sounds. Classic is uh, Zelda's opening a chest. Ba, 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 ba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been meaning yeah. to rewatch Lost, but not. Uh, but it's so long, and as I recall, the CGI entities didn't really hold up. Is there a lot of CGI? Oh, no. he means the smoke, no. I guess. There's not much CGI it's really to worry about. Yeah. I don't, no, I, I, I think it's pretty good. There's some moments. Man. There's like one CGI one. moment in the beginning of, like, I think it was season five, where... It was clearly CGI. They were trying to show like the stuff underwater, but um, other than that, yeah, I didn't. There's not much. Like I've been rewatching. I'm almost. It, done it's with it. it's very good for was CGI rewatch. as well, right? Was it? Yeah, I don't remember it being. Oh too bad. yeah, the polar bear is noticeable. Bear? I mean, it's tw okay, twelve, yeah. fifteen years ago. So season yeah. one. Yeah, I guess. So, I love yeah, Mummy, yeah. but every time I watch Mummy, I'm like, damn. Uh, it's son. wonderful, but it's, it's wonderful. King. Yeah, it's, it's like I see I mean, the Scorpion sand. Scorpion King was awful even at the time. Scorpion oh, King yeah, was awful yeah, even yeah. at the time, but I, I mean, like I see the sand that looks great, but then you see the scarabs, and like now when you look at it, you can tell they're not even the same color. Is that you know you can see the <laughs> that, uh, but it's I still you know. Yeah, I mean, it's Stargate great. honestly holds up really well. Stargate. That's because they, they use the seven Canadian forests, the seven same Canadian forest spots. <laughs> yeah, for that. yeah, yeah. It's like, we're always going to Vancouver, baby. Dude, I don't yeah. know if you yeah. saw, but they were doing a behind the scenes for Stargate, and one of the guys was showing that for one episode, they had like a, uh, I guess you'd call it like a villager skirt, right? And yeah. they flipped it around and painted it another color for a different episode. And they slightly switched where like the design was, but it was yeah. the same exact yeah. skirt. It was just to save money. I have no issue with that, by the way. I, I'm sure as a mm -hmm. kid, I didn't notice it either. But it's like once you yeah. see it, you're all yeah. Because we want to be fooled too oh, for into sure. the fantasy of like different locations. And it's a so. TV show. I mean, you know, yeah. you get you, you got to give it but some it's slack. Like when you want to believe, you know, it's it makes it easy for them. Stargate was really good because also they used uh, they used laser guns, but they had real guns, so it sort of offset it. So you'd see some you'd see Tilk using his big you know, laser penis staff, and then somebody yeah. would shoot off their P90 BS gun. Oh, yeah, dude, I said they, it. the actors hated the Zat Nicotello, you know, the Zat guns? Yeah. Because oh, yeah, the uncomfortable the looking. They look like penises. They yeah. do. They yeah. look yeah. terrible, yeah. man. <laughs> organic yeah. stuff yeah. looks, I mean, the honest truth yeah. is a lot of organic stuff, because if it's a gun, there's a certain shape to yeah. it. You're holding a meat missile, you know, no matter yeah. what, no matter yeah. which way we describe it, you are holding Spallic a deformed shape. penis yeah. in your hand. Uh, Kira yeah. says, has anyone heard what a T-Rex were supposed to sound like? If uh, if what was published is actually accurate for real sounds like some eldritch horror thing. Yeah, the T-Rex, that'll change multiple times. You never what know color what, these, what color they what are. They were yeah. all pink. <laughs> dude, just a Miami Vice T-Rex. <laughs> like, dude, I don't yeah, care. Yeah. I can't even clap, but I'll still eat you. James Troutner, $20 I'm just Super a giant Jack. chicken. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Look forward to this every week. Yeah, I don't know. We were supposed to be talking about games a while ago, but we sort of we branched away. This is just oh, the way shit. we are. Okay, yeah. let, let me let me say something because you were talking about Lost. One of my favorite things about Lost yeah. is the music montages. Yes, like, yes. When what was when, what, the one where they're marching? Oh. Dude, you, they have some amazing like oldie yeah. songs. Uh, just randomly playing and the dude like making breakfast in the oh, bunker. Oh, I see what oh, you're yeah. talking oh, about. I love when those the moments. Playing in yeah, the all, the, yeah, all yeah. these like montages That's they mean. had. And it, it, yeah. then it, it kind of had me thinking, do they do audio Isn't montages that to die in, in Warwick's games? downtown yeah. from what I, I think? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Do they do musical montages in shows anymore? No, is that I'm what your question like, is? For games, is there an equivalent? Oh. Can, do they do like audio montages for games do we see that i well we saw it with uh guardians of the galaxy in cutscenes at least yeah were, true like, some... that's a good <clears throat> that's a good point i think for the most and part the fights. only time you i notice anything it's not a music montage is like meditating in uh, in uh, assassin's creed 
or passing yeah. time in an open world third person game. Sometimes you'll get like a different step, style of music. Can you remember? Does Ghost of Tsushima go real time? Not real time. I'm sorry. Does it? It doesn't fade out, right? It tra it it's it quick times the world if you rest, right, or meditate. Yeah. In Ghost, so. I think those are probably the fastest, and there's no music they could play. Like I haven't, I, I don't remember any that had like actual real music. Probably because it yeah. costs money to license it too, right? You know, yeah, and, uh, DMCA, sure. and, and DMCs, and yeah, and then, yeah, yeah, know, and then streamers, yeah, and then all those kind of things. Yeah, I yeah. think Guardians is the closest I can think of. Guardians, like you would start did a, a good job. fight, and it would be full on like mm -hmm. some classic rock music. Yeah, yeah. The ultimate had very particular music, right? Yeah, I had like uh, 80s music when you, or 70s, 70s, 80s music when you like did the mm. ultimate thing and started, like everyone got it. <clears> I want to, I want to read this one. Jeffrey with the 50 super chat. Thanks for the podcast, guys. Been awesome having two per week. Looking forward to Persona 3 Reloaded. Missed out on it at the time. So yeah, Persona 3 Reloaded. When does that come out? That comes out in February or January? It's Jan No, it's January, isn't it? Uh, January, yeah. January, yep. yeah. So that's another one that Reloaded, remastering. Um, yeah. What are they adding to Persona 3? Do we know? Is there what are they doing? Is it just graphics? Is it or is it graphics at all? Do we know what it definitely graphics? Yeah, okay. So a graphics upgrade resolution, probably. I mean, but, graphics, I think from what I saw, it kind of almost looks like Persona 5. It's like a remake, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Well, good. I, I personally I think it looked great anyway, because the art style. Their art style yeah. is just weird and yeah. doesn't need high I mean, as long as it's not cutting your and they did eyeballs. the thing where it's more like two two point five D type thing okay. versus realistic three D. I yeah. think because Persona Four is rough, man. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if you guys have played Persona Four. Yeah, yeah. Um, I played it. it w w what part? It, like when it does the three D realistic stuff for fights and stuff. Oh, it just it has an aged as well. You know, when you compare it to some of the more like comic book. 2.5 D stuff. Dude, I think Persona is like, uh, you know, maybe Zelda in some way. There's a couple other games where the art style pays off, uh, you know, the art yeah, style. Yeah. I mean, it'd be great to upgrade what you're talking about, but when I think of Persona, I never think of like bad. I mean, there's some weird stuff the that thing, they've right? chosen. I mean, Wind Waker, right? I, exactly. That's what I was going to mention was Wind Waker. Go ahead, Johnny. Sorry. Well, yeah, Wind the thing like Persona 5 is a game that will age very well. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Right? Like, those are graphics that will stand the test of time. The Persona 4 was different because you look at that and they tried to do a more like realistic 3D. And so, therefore, it's easier to notice the that technical. That did not age that well. Yeah. Um, with, what Silver was saying, though, is Wind Waker. Wind Waker would only need a resolution up, bump up, and I probably wouldn't require. They, they kind of got of that. that with the. Um... The HD version, yeah. Oh, did they the, do an um, HD version Wii of Wind Waker? I didn't get it. Yeah, uh, for for the Wii U. Uh, so oh. good looking. <laughs> they did. On the Wii I mean, U, though? So they sold to what, yeah. seven people? <laughs> yeah, uh, dude, including they, me. They remastered, yeah. they remastered <laughs> Wind Waker and uh, Twilight Princess on, on the Wii U. And I we did remember the Twilight, the yeah. And all that came to Switch is fucking the what was it? The the Skyward Sword that no one asked for. But Kulaban mentioned one, Okami. I think Okami. Okami. It, it, yeah, I the think dog, Okami. Right? Yeah, the dog was one. the dog game. Dude, if you just, like, that's the thing. Okami. Art. Okami. The more realistic we get, there's an uncanny valley. We always talk also about that. Nino Kuni, but... Wrath of the White Witch. Oh, yeah, Nino Kuni. It's like, it, very, it looks very, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Studio Ghibli. Oh, mm -hmm. does it? Because, because Studio Ghibli was involved. Yeah. 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 So the oh, characters they? looked like uh, Studio Ghibli characters. Especially the cutscenes, the cartoon cutscenes. It's like you're watching... Spirited Away or something. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, I haven't played and that one. He wrote the music for it as well. Yeah, it's a good game. I think that, like Johnny said, though, the more they try... That's why I don't want... Just because we can do 8,000 flesticles of Smitakai on your polygonals. I don't give a shit. Like, a lot of times it's just the art. It doesn't have to be, you know, super realistic looking. The art no. style can pay off for years, depending on how you do it. I mean, some oh, of these games absolutely. probably look great even now. Dragon's Lair is doing Marie Perset. I think Dragon's Lair looks fantastic today. But yeah. that's Don yes. Bluth. Don Bluth is a man. I realize whenever any of you guys joke about anime, I always say I don't watch it. And yet I'm a religious watcher of Don Bluth, and he's absolutely anime. I just had Titan A. Titan A. Dude, Attack on Titan. Secret of. There's a meme about, not Abzi, but there's a meme about just this, where it says, you've told your friends for years you do not like watching long yeah. anime, and they always suggest you watch, what is it, One Punch Man or whatever? 
They, there's no, one that's super long. long. I know. I'm not saying. I'm not saying. I was bringing oh, up that this one, meme. One Calm down. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 you should, you should watch. You. you should watch One Piece or Naruto. It's no. Like, what are we gonna say, John? <laughs> no, no. I think. Yeah, I was gonna say One Piece because it had thousands. I think that was the yeah, meme too. Was yeah. One Piece where they were like. A yeah. friend will not stop <laughs> suggesting you watch One Piece. And I'm like, Jesus yeah. Christ, man. We're, yeah. I, I, apparently, I'm not alone in that. But no, uh, some of those um, some of those games I would like to see return. I feel like Nintendo's one of the few companies that like sort of still... Well, I guess Hi-Fi Rush. Hi-Fi Rush will probably yeah. age pretty well, right? Hi-Fi Rush yeah. seems like, yeah. yeah. So that'll, that'll, aim, that'll age well. But um, yeah. what other ones? What, uh, that's a good question. What game, what ones will age well? What ones that have we got in the last two years that we think will age well because of their art style? Is there a... something like Return of the Obra Den, you know? Because um, it's like literally just... It's like toilet paper on your eyes. The... It's monochrome. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, uh, of 2D games, like uh, Hollow Knight and shit, where it's Ori? just like... Cartoon. Do you think Ori will last? Ori, Ori, o o Ori yeah. doesn't yeah. really... How do you HD Ori, Ori really? At that point, you're yeah. just, you know, yeah. it's yeah. not really working out. Um, Jet Grind Radio is another one where the style Sea of Stars abbreviated review says. See, yeah. I thought Sea of Stars. Am I wrong? I thought Sea of Stars was the fat Final Fantasy old style graphics. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like eight I mean, it's pix mm -hmm. pixel art. Pixel art. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Was Cuphead. One? Cuphead. <laughs> That's a good one. Sorry. Cuphead go ahead. And, go ahead. Uh, uh, what's the other one? Not Sea of Stars. Uh, Cocoon. God. Octopath. Octopath Traveler. Okay, so I, I mean, guess Octopath in my brain, Traveler is also kind of pixel art. What is it? Two point yeah. five yeah, like for Octo. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Vampire Survival will age amazing. Yeah, because it looked old when it came out. Bro. Yeah, it does look <laughs> come terrible. on, yeah. come on! Don't do this to me. Don't do. No Man's Sky looks very pleasing. No Man's Sky does, but it also has a lot of problems, man. No Man's Sky. I, I mean, I'm already starting to notice stuff. Well, I was noticing stuff years ago with No Man's Sky, I, but it does. It, it's good. Yeah. I don't know. I guess you guys are all, all of you are way more fans of the uh, of the really fat Final Fantasy chub. What's that? Ch you know, chubby. Not, I, I honestly never beat like I, I I don't. I'm not not like a, a huge fan, fan of, the, of it. I just yeah. don't. I get to a point where I'm like, you know, I just don't beat them. The only ones I beat. Yeah, I don't. I can't even remember any. Dana Win Gamer. Yeah, I enjoy this podcast very much. Thank you. Yes, thank you, man. Thanks for sticking around. We stopped talking about games a while ago. I had to get us back on. We we're talking about movies for five years. Um, I have a question about games, though, that I was thinking about. Is away. there like, um, I don't know if you guys play a lot of horror games, but was was there a moment you remember that is like the most scared you've been in, in a, a game? It could be just an instant, you know, like something where, like the the floor fell beneath you and you just like l lost it for a second. Oh my god. Scare, scared as ever been, screamed like a schoolgirl, uh, system shock monkeys. Yes. Yeah. That was I mean, I oh, had that, guys who that flew. That is a common answer. That, yeah, that is, I had a guy who flew military <laughs> jets playing that, and he screamed like a child when he saw it. He was like, <laughs> what the f And they're like chittering, chasing you. So without a doubt, that's like for sure my answer. What about you, Abzi? You do horror games a lot. Is there one that you remember above all others for being scary? Like a scary moment in a horror game? The... Yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely, like, the most recent one was the fucking... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. The the wellness center in Alan Wake 2 was horrifying. Oh. It's very scary. What what Was it the vibe? It was the vibe. It was, like, the, the idea of, like, what's haunting you is, a you know, an old woman. You know, usually it's, like, a young child that is <laughs> yeah scary, usually like, it's a little girl or whatever and an old woman with like you know uh mental issues is also pretty scary yeah what about you johnny you asked the question dude i i will always remember i i was playing subnautica and i was traveling and suddenly like the floor went went away like there was no floor and i was just going and I actually lost my direction of like how to go back to the flooring so it was like it was just pitch black under me i could see anything i was going like super scared and the light only showed like one centimeter in front of you right because it's terrible and that and the pda says something like leviathan life forms detected make them sure you you want to be here right now and i'm like dude i don't know how to go back and <laughs> 
just a dread and of course i got attacked by a, a ghost leviathan which at the time was very scary i gave up on a part in it oh silver do you have one go for it man yeah um just to give a different answer um like phasmophobia has probably done it has probably been a game that has done it for me a couple of times over the years um like i'm pretty jaded at this point but you know when you're up there in the in the ghost room by yourself um like trying to get some kind of um hint or clue from it and all of a sudden it like turns off all the lights uh maybe it even like blows up the light bulb and then it like hisses in your ear <laughs> like there is there is sort of an instinct there that goes oh shit also right. because there there's also there's both that natural instinct but there's also sort of a gameplay aspect to it of oh shit is it hunting now that it slammed the door or is it uh or is it just fucking with me mm -hmm. um that yet that you also have to identify like the level of threat there uh and sort of the creepiness of that and uh can be very effective at times for me there's another one that isn't supposed to be scary but it it haunted me to the point to where a couple times i stopped i, I gave up because i was like i don't like this moment and it's a Tyrannosaurus Rex in Tomb Raider 1. And in Tomb Raider, oh. you're in the fucking submarine, and the ground starts shaking, and I hadn't seen that kind of effect before in a game. So my brain was like, oh, it's crashing. There's something, go like, there's a there's a graphical effect. I'm jittering on a, a polygon in the camera. and it, But then I realized it was rhythmic, and I was like, oh, what the fuck? And I turned around, and that thing got me, and I was like, are you shitting Dude. me? That was haunting oh, to yeah. me as a kid. Go ahead. Sorry, Absy. I, I don't think of it, mine. This one isn't is necessarily that scary, but like when you said it doesn't make me want to play a game, it's from Vampire the Masquerade. There was that fucking werewolf dude. Do you remember the werewolf? Where it's in the like, second location, you see him, and he's yeah, up on I, the hills I, and shit. I I forgot where the first time you encounter him, but like for for a while, you're like, okay, I know this werewolf is like unkillable. I should just yeah run away from him all the time, and then and then towards the end of that section it's like okay now you gotta you gotta fight him i think like, there's a part in that no. too abzi where if i remember right you go to a spot and skip. if you look you can see him run across a ridge and there's like the moon yeah. and i remember going what yeah. the fuck i guess he's after <laughs> yeah. me yeah haunting yeah. dread i'm gonna read some of the uh, uh posts a lot of people are saying alien isolation i think that is a uh like, yeah, because it's also yeah. very unique to you, right? Because it can uh, happen at different times. Ways. Yeah, yeah. And there are times where you feel it has to be planned. Like, they did such a good job that it's, like, at a perfect moment in that game where there are moments where that yeah. thing comes out. Dead Space in general. Um, Thief 3 Asylum. Yeah, I, I did. That's one of the few games I've ever done, or one of the few levels in my life I've ever done an entire video about. But that and Manan are my two favorite levels um, ever in a game. The Asylum... Yeah. The cradle is one of the best levels ever made. What are we gonna say? Uh, it's over. Just um, like Alien Isolation, sadly, never had that effect, effect on me because I managed to game it pretty quickly or figure it out, like how to like game how to summon the, it almost. The, the, is that what you mean? Not not summon it, but like how to outmaneuver it, um, pretty pretty consistently. Uh, mm. Like as long as you move like super slow. Um, it's generally not gonna like I've beaten Alien Isolation in a, on a one life playthrough without dying, um, and it did, wasn't really all that difficult um, for me. Because um, you figured out a way to stop it from attacking most of the time, or yeah, showing up. That, yeah, yeah it's, for the most part, stop not show up and at all, um, just mm. by being super quiet and super slow, uh, and super meticulous. Um, and when it did show up, it was generally pretty, e I found it pretty easy to avoid it. So I never, I never experienced that tension that a lot of other players got from it. Unfortunately, even the first time through, or is it after? Only yeah, even, after even the first it? time through, mm -hmm. I think, I think it, it's because I approached it from the, Having been a stealth gamer for so long, that was the mentality I approached. You were with, already doing stealth right was, from the starting, yeah. basically. Yeah, yeah, pretty right. much. Um, uh, the baby from our this is Chenorix <laughs> X. The baby from oh, RE oh, Village God. was wild. Yeah, fuck yeah, it that. was man. Fuck that shit. They did a good job. Resident Three Evil Nemesis. Oh, dude, the guy. Yeah, man, when that guy's walking around just slowly, methodically. Uh -huh. Walking towards you, and I would, yeah, I would get, yeah. I would want to get by him, and he'd be in the door, and I'd be like, "Fuck, I need to get by!" 
I need to get by. And he it just that's my that's my I hate that in game in horror game. I hate the, the, the methodical the chase. Run, no, just running away from something. I just don't like running away from something. Do you mean you don't, don't, don't like, like it as in you hate doing it because it's stupid or because it starts to crawl up your neck? I just hate it. Like I, I, I don't, yeah, I crawl up my neck probably. I just hate running away from shit. I hate it when it's like, oh, Mr. X or whatever, and you have to run away. That's why three. I never just, I just didn't play three because the whole game is just running away from Nemesis. Jay Reaper says the same thing. Five dollars super chat. Thanks, Jay. He says little girl part in. Vi oh, it not. I yeah, I read Visage. this as village. He, Visage. Yeah, messed me up. Yeah, Visage was amazing, dude. It's one of the scariest games I've played. And what's cool about it is that it's that the atmosphere is so scary is that you jump scare yourself by like opening dude, a door. Or that's something. the best thing though. Really the best cool. thing is when yeah. they don't fake comedy. you out or whatever. It's when yeah. whatever you did a door, you'll hit a door wrong or you'll think you closed a door and you and the door is now open. You're like, did somebody come in here? You know where you're lying yeah. to yourself. That's the best, yeah. man. Yeah. My favorite part about that game. And I have like a clip of it on Twitch. It's like when I, uh, <laughs> yeah, you come across like this shotgun, right? And it's just sitting there and I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to have a shotgun in this game. I'm going to be able to like shoot shit. And then you take it and you go like, Boop, and then it just it like you know those little cartoons the little like flag comes yeah out. the flag comes yeah. out <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wah, wah. Yeah. Um, and because because once you pick it up like doom music starts playing like heavy ass rock music and then it's like <laughs> oh so it fools you into ass. thinking you are fully going like full bore <laughs> yeah. um yeah, will yeah. grace and five dollar super chat thank you very much doom reaper says more than getting scared about something just the nerves of losing your run in some games oh you mean that yeah the stress of like if you die you die if he dies, yeah. he dies. Yeah, um, uh, I mean the 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 tensest playthrough I've ever had of a game, I think, was uh, one life playthrough or one save playthrough. Johnny, if you or... have to hit the restroom, it's fine. By the way, because you're uh, usually yeah, the I'm one okay. who's drank. Okay, um, continue. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah oh, usually Dead Space like... Two. <laughs> Dead Space Two. Oh, yeah, God, you could only yeah. do like two. I could only do like two saves. I think it was on like the hardest difficulty uh, for the oh, entire run, which was like eight hours. And by the end. Like there's a sequence at the very end of Dead Space 2 where you have to um like jab your eye. Uh Ooh, oh I hate oh, that the, stuff. Yeah. And, oh um, fuck that. And if you mess that up in any way, you die instantly. There's an instant game over. So for me, like the <laughs> the, entire, the tension um, of knowing that. Yeah. Dude. The entire playthrough was like riding on getting that that icicle into the um into his eye in in the exact right spot in the exact right way uh there was a lot of tension there my hands were a little sweaty but i managed to um, there, there was this one those... scene this one scene in the peripheral show where they do something with an eye oh yeah and that i felt like a little sick in the stomach watching that man that just a one scene yeah, that was a that was a good show unfortunately canceled because it cost them billions but what were you gonna say Abzi? Oh, yeah. did you have one no, I was just gonna say for Dead Space too. Like I, when I played it, uh, even on on the hardest difficulty, like there's some encounters that were just crazy. Like like people like enemies flanking and shit all the time and running at you. And I had to like restart so like some sequences so many times. So the fact that you did it all in one save is insane. Mm. Yeah. I also had Dead uh, Dead Rising, um, the zombie game. I remember in the first one, there's these cultists, and you get knocked out and you wake up. I think in a in a uh i believe it's i believe it's a um like a grave not a grave but a what do you call it box that you're buried in jeez i don't know why i can't come up with the word oh a uh like a coffin coffin, coffin? thank you i don't know why i was having a hard yeah. time with that inside yeah. of a, a movie inside of the theater that's in the mall and you get out Oof. and there's people with long swords the cultists they don't say anything they just try to attack you and i remember just being like what the fuck because it was a different thing and it would just it shined a little bit of a different light on the game that i normally expected and that was way more scary than zombies it was just like i don't know what's happening right now i like those moments in games where everything's normal and you get that one scary moment even uncharted has had yeah. a couple where there's something weird in an Uncharted game, you know, where you wonder if it's supernatural or whatever, and you're like, whoa, what the fuck? Yeah. Is, is this the time where shit just goes completely south? Those are awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, Peripheral was renewed, but then sort of canceled because of the strike. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, unfortunately. Dead mm. Rising 14-hour run was a bit stressful. Dude, Dead Rising with its fucking time limits. I liked them, but yeah. man, I think that game just... I. I I don't know. Did you? I didn't. I don't mind time limits. I don't love them, but in that game, it felt like it paid off. I guess for some people, yeah, it didn't. I I agree. It did in that game, even though 
I mean, the the I no, the frustrate, frustrating aspect of Dead Rising wasn't the time limit; it was the escort element. Oh god, oh, god. dude, they were so terrible. They were so <laughs> terrible, and you already moved like a stoved up Alan Wake. And it didn't help, particularly because it didn't help that uh, there was friendly fire, and so if you had like a melee weapon and you and and there were zombies going after the people you were escorting. You would hit the people you were escorting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Typical shit. And you would and kill them. Escort yeah. missions are. It's so funny because sometimes it'll pop up, and I wouldn't even realize I'm doing an escort mission. It'll just be seamless. But then you get that game where the escort missions are quite literally the worst part of the game, and you just yeah. whenever it pops up, your brain is like, "Here we go." Oh, and Dishonored. Slow down Dishonored had walking. some I mean, spooky moments. For... It very much did. Dishonored one and two. Sorry. Right, sorry. You know, lo looking back at it, Dead Rising really was like a roguelite an early roguelike game yeah yeah in, in many you ways to, you had to go through like the multiple playthroughs to learn uh the uh like the different times uh and figure out what time to do what mission and, then, and, and then stuff. figure out how to line it up yeah so the more the more you played you got different endings um that like you could get different endings uh that weren't like the, the true ending but up until you got that you you kept playing the various playthroughs then you kept like advance, you 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 saved your progress over those playthroughs, so it really was like was one of like the original roguelike games. By the way, I, there, no, there was no. Procedural I don't think level. so. Yeah, I don't think there, no. it, it was, was all, just the was, overlapping missions, and yeah. you couldn't do them all, or it was very difficult. I, I'm sure somebody's figured out how to do them all. I did. You, you, oh, you could do them all. Yeah, yeah I then, didn't but you had to you had to coordinate it perfectly, and you yeah. had to know where where to be at what exact time. Yeah, yeah, I love those games. As we wrap this up, first of all, Johnny, what are you streaming? I'm streaming Near Automata. Near tomorrow. Automata tomorrow. What time? 2 p.m. UK, 9 a.m. EST hey. or EDT. I don't, I don't know. Uh, the... PST is Pacific. I think it's, I think it's then. Right? Yeah. So PST is 6, I want to uh, say. 6 a.m. Yeah, it'll be 6 a.m. Yeah, because you're a little bit before I get in from Bright working out. and early. Bright and early, so check him out at Johnny Plays Live. Uh, you can. I'll make sure. To, I gotta make sure to throw his uh, link up in our uh, in our uh, YouTube as well. Is anybody else doing anything cool before we wrap this up? Anything cool for the weekend? Anything amazing? Got any amazing plans? You know, I might be starting up a Sea of Thieves guild, so we'll see. Yeah, we'll get that oh, going. Oh, cool. Yeah, we'll get that going. I'd love to go puke with everybody else. Be amazing. <laughs> yeah. I'd love to go vomit from my from and have Silver criticize me for not knowing of which port and starboard, starboard is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Port and starboard. Oh God, here we go. Here we go. Port is left, right? Yeah, it's four letters. <laughs> yes. That's I just cheat. Correct. Port is four letters. Left is four letters. Works fine. That'll yeah, be it for us. That. Yeah, it's like, yeah, got to gotta cheat. Sometimes you got to cheat life. Yeah, we got to role play, man. Yeah. Got to role play. You know? Oh, no, please. Please. It's hard <laughs> enough as it is. Anyway, <laughs> thank you, everybody, for watching. Appreciate it. Bro, Show some to love to... scurvy as well. No. Uh, it, it is not Far Cry 2. I don't want to contract any diseases in my games. Will Grayson, $10 Super Chat, another 10 BC. I forgot my message. The sewer level in Shadows of the Empire messed me up as a kid. They're these tentacle monsters in the water that would grab you, terrifying to an 11-year-old. 11, 11 oh, the caves and thieves? Yeah. Oh, my God. The first thief. Yeah, those are great. The second uh, level. Johnny's channel is Johnny Plays Live on Twitch. He's still doing Twitch. He'll be doing underboob as well as cleavage. He's going to double down. Yeah. 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 John, he's already he got, got the shirt. The angles. He's got to yeah. undo one more button in the shirt, and uh, he'll be a, a, a real Twitch streamer. Anyway, that'll be it for us. Thank you, everybody. Peace out and enjoy the rest of, or enjoy your weekend. Yeah, enjoy your weekend. Peace out, everybody. Take care. See ya.